think Dallas is having technical issues at the moment as well. Uh oh. Can you, is he there? No, he's not in Discord anymore. Uh oh. It's just not meant to be today. Because um, I brought a bright and sun, sunny attitude towards. And you people. did. You came in too hot. You just literally, uh, you burned, uh, burned everyone up a little bit. Mm -mm -mm. Well, if anyone is here, we are waiting for our our Davos to get back. And I am fighting with uh, my computer, but I think I got it working again now. Actually, can I fix that a little more? No. Mm -mm. What was that? I think we're in business. There he is. That's all right. I was having issues as well, so no big whoop. Are you good to go? Yes, I am. Okay, cool. So yeah, we were saying uh, you cleared the Verbi Cave. Odaxi found the those the cursed items. I think one was a, a pearl of power and a, a, and a wand of some sorts. Um, and then you guys also managed to get the two large cask of mead and get them back to uh, to good mead to uh, Lyra, who's running the uh, the tavern there. Uh, and everyone was excited to get that back. And then uh, you were talking with oh lord, now I can't remember her name. What is the name of our uh, Olivessa, she is a uh, she. Olivessa and Shander are the two that have been kind of the the front runners for uh, taking over the the, the speaker uh, job in uh, Goodmead. Olivessa doesn't want the job, uh, but she's a respectable person around, and a lot of her friends think she could do it. Shander, you guys have not met yet, um, but he is someone else that has 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 been brought up in the in the running. And, uh, yeah, I think we were pretty much closing out the night at Goodmead. I can move us there now. The Goodmead, the Goodmead ta or brewery there. So let me just slide us over. Da, 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 da. Where is it? This one. All right. Uh, Melandra is feeling much better. Uh, from She's pretty much fully recovered from her injuries. Are you fine, cats? Not here. Now I can drop you all off. I think I can. Oh, I can't do it from the screen, that's why. Uh, so yeah, the night was starting to wind down a little bit. Uh, drinks were being tossed around, a little bit of celebration going on. Here's Caro and Davos and Odaxi. Big boys. The Queen's already in. Cool. Uh, so the, yeah, so the afternoon is essentially yours. Uh, is there is there anything else? You, is there anything you guys want to accomplish or do? Uh, yeah, is there a book in the tavern uh, that that like how the government here works, what the government does? Is there a, do I have any semblance of what I'm getting myself into? Uh, you you probably not. There's not. There's definitely not a book here. Like you know the govern the the, the government of the ten towns one hundred and one. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that issue's not here. Um, you would know, you'd know since you've been in the area for a while, that's basically every town elects a speaker and the speaker's job is to represent the town's interest, uh, 
once a month in Bryn Shander. All the speakers come together, and they. But the Tin Towns, though, it's not like. It, they're very disjointed. They're not. It's really a very soft, loose affiliation. They don't. Um, mm-hmm. It's really about town first, you know, and then like if there's like a, some sort of like major event or occurrence, maybe the Tin Towns get together. But some of them still have bad blood. There's a big fight over resources, especially on the different lakes. Um, so you you would be essentially you know solving town problems at, on a micro level and then you know representing those problems if they're if they extend you know on a larger scale at Bryn Shander. Um, so the job is kind of what you make of it you know each like a town like Dugan's Hole where there's only like 50 people you know, there's not there's not a ton of like of maintenance required but like Bryn Shander which is the the epicenter essentially you know that'd be like running mm-hmm. a, an app that'd be like running a new york essentially you know or something of something of, of that scale uh, yeah here. so yeah d- dealing with dealing with the just the overall safety of the town is probably the biggest concern out here um you know making sure that everyone's got food and and you know gets by um you would know having drinks with Lyra and uh, uh, some of the other the folk around here that all of us, she's thrown her support behind you because that's what you asked for. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the, the elections would still be like a week or two away to do a formal election. Uh, in the meantime, you're just, you know, you're just her front runner, essentially. So you don't have any immediate responsibility. Mm-hmm. Got it. Who, I want to try to get the curses off these items. Who, I think I asked Melisandra about yeah, them. But. Yeah, you asked Melandra about them. Um, Melandra. Yeah, she. After you know, after thinking for a while, she she'll come back and she says, "Well, there is a a, a, a remove curse spell. Uh, I'm not of uh, the proficient enough skill to 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 use it quite yet, and then I'm assuming you're not either. It it's a pretty common spell between like." people of our people of faith basically um so there's nothing nothing i can do immediately but you know, maybe there's someone in Bryn Shander who you know if there's going to be anyone in this in these towns it seems like that's where they'd be um but there's supernatural and unnatural places all around that also lift curses bestow curses it's uh it's pretty much a bit of a gamble I think you're it's a level three spell and I think you don't get that for like another what two levels or so I believe no but I do have ceremony but that's not anything what does ceremony do again I think we talked about this last <laughs> like time. funerals bless water <laughs> oh you can marry atone, someone atonement <laughs> marry marriage funerals can I be the best man <laughs> inauguration <laughs> yeah um yeah that's probably not going to help you too much uh, yeah, the, your your best bet's probably to to find someone who does carry the ability to to do that sort of healing at that at that level, or yes, hopefully we come across maybe someone who sells magical scrolls. I've seen those. Is in, there a yeah? Is there a priest or a shop like that in this town? I, in Goodmead, no. Like from what you've seen, it's just really it's really about this brewery. Uh, mm-hmm. like this is like their main source of income here and uh, and like fishing, you know, like whatever they can catch to the south. Um, but, you know, bigger city, like I said, bigger city like Bryn Chander, they would probably have something. They'd have like actual like magic shops and things of that nature. It's still a little spare. You see, you've traveled. It's a little. It, the Ten Towns is still sparse, considered like compared to like some of the other bigger cities. But mm-hmm. there are options. Uh, here we go. So it's about. Uh, it's probably about seven p.m. I think. Uh, you know, roughly around where you guys are. So it's getting it's getting a little darker because it was it's a longer trip to and from the the Verbi cave, 
Is there any other and questions? They don't, seem to be dimming, they don't seem to be dimming the firelight in this town, like, um... Uh, Dugan Hall, I think it was. Uh, they do, actually. This town will start to dial down soon, and it'll be, like, they do sacrifice warmth. Uh, that's, that's their sacrifice in this town, unfortunately, so... Although I think oh, I got the, I think I got the times backwards. I'll have to look at that. But anyway, yeah, they, they it, it it is unfortunately in this town too. Uh, let's see. No if fires. Davos is first order of business, for sure. Reinstating the warmth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the three the three options per per you know what the Tin Town's been doing is going to be either human sacrifice, food sacrifice, or warmth sacrifice, so... Uh, they need some innovation. Yeah, yeah you, you could be the Maybe guy. Maybe some mead sacrifice. It could be your... Ooh. Right. Well... Knock, knock some of these back. <laughs> uh, it says, no fires are lit between dusk and dawn. So, in theory, it's the daylight that's colder right now. And then, you know, after... Is that right? No, it is nighttime. No, Lit between nighttime. dusk and dawn. Yeah, so it's the other way around. So it, they are starting to 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 uh, wind down, and uh, it's gonna be a cold, cold night. A lot of cuddling. So people are around the tavern. You can hear like the sounds of like uh, gossip and and drinks clanging and and food, uh, you know, being passed around. Lear is kind of working back and forth. I'm going to give for a stack of my flyers and ask them to uh, hand those to patrons with their meads. Who are you giving this to? Uh, the waitress, our dragonborn friend. Uh, Lear, uh, she's going to look at your flyers and look at you. Uh, you, if, if, In case you didn't remember, um, she'll remind you that... While she'd love to hand out your, your flyers, she's only got one good working arm, and she kind of needs that to do the rest of her job. So uh, why don't you just put a spread uh, on the uh, on the main table in the center there, and I'll remind every patron patron to to try and grab one on their way on their way out. Yeah, that's fine. I'll allow it. <laughs> allow it. <laughs> Thanks for your help. She kind of smirks at you, looks like side eyes you a little bit. Um, and as I go to put them on the table, I'm going to tell her, we're, we're all going to need to lend a hand to get through this election. And I give her a thumbs up. She says, well, you don't get any points for originality, but I do appreciate someone with a bit of a sense of humor. And then she gives you the finger with her good hand. <laughs> actually, I actually don't know how many fingers Dragonborns have. It may not be, it may not be as, as effective looking. <laughs> Uh, Olivesa comes back by and well he's not going to need it for the night but there is uh, you know we do owe you all a bit of a, a thank you we, we're happy to offer you some rooms here and there you know spare rooms that we have throughout and this you can have one of you can stay in the old speaker's room uh, speaker's house you know he, since he's not uh, going to be needing it in the near future Or well, you're welcome to continue to drink and talk. Uh, is this a body? Yeah, there's a guy up there playing playing a little bit of music, a little light light uh, plucking of the guitar of the lute you hear in the background. Oh, fine bard, a moment of your time, please. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all hear the music kind of skip as he like looks up and sees this towering minotaur over him. Uh, and watching, he'd seen him in the room, but didn't expect him to, like, come uh, approach him. And he got, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, hi, hi, hi. What can I, what can I, oh. Fear those... not, I don't eat little things. Um, I wasn't worried about that, but now I kind of am. Good, you should be. Anyway, you see the walrus <laughs> over there and the man in the robe. He kind of, like, looks over your shoulder. I, I see the man, but I, I don't see a, a walrus. He's a walrus. Don't, don't patronize me. Oh, okay. Um, that's 
Davos. Davos is going to be um, going for speaker, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, but we, yeah, 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 we killed some furbergs, okay. giants, ogres. Yeah, I was just well. If he's going to go for speaker, I was thinking maybe um, you could make a song. I could pay you to make a song about Davos and maybe help him with his popularity around this town. Oh, sure, of course. I mean, I would love to. I'd love to come up with a new song. What, uh, so you can tell me, I guess, uh, let me, uh, he kind of pulls out, like, this little, like, scratch pad of, like, you know, of cheap ink and, and, and paper, and, uh, what, uh, what, what's his name again? Uh, Davos. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to spell. I'll it. just, you know, I'll give it my best. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. And? Yeah, Davos is his name. Okay, and what uh, what tale of uh, of accomplishment am I am I singing in his honor? He is the uh, um, slayer of Furbolgs. The the um, what, what what do you call someone who swoons? Uh, a uh, swooner. A swooner. <laughs> uh, a swoonist. Sweet, sweet talker of giants. Uh, layer of. <laughs> Ogres, um. Well, he's got—he's really got a, a fetish for the bigger, the bigger-bodied uh, monsters, huh? Well, he is traveling with a walrus and a minotaur. Okay. Uh, I've got uh, Slayer of Verbeek, Swooner, Sweet Talker of Giants, Slayer of Ogres, and 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 um, making mead good again. I think that's make it. make mead good again. Good mead, good. again. Something like that. Make good. I, I'm sure you could make do good mean good more good. gooder again. More good. Yeah. Okay. okay and uh, I mean, I'm I'm a bit of a musician myself. I pull out my little drum. Oh sure, Just, sure. You know, you're really oh, I okay. mean, if you want to put a drum solo in there somewhere, I can, you know, warm up my fingers a bit and tap a diddly do. He like watches you like what? <laughs> don't you like stretch skin over a pot to make a drum? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, so he kind of like, like chokes back a little bit of uh, uh, of me there. Uh, yeah, drums. Okay, drum solo. Sure, I can, I can do that. Um, is there anything else you want me to include? Uh, do I include you and the the walrus? No, 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 no. This is all about him. I don't want to take it away from Davos. Okay. All right. Well, that's uh, that's and. So just basically really focus on the slaying and bit of things. He's a he slays a lot of things. He slays a lot of things, lays a lot of things, whatever oh, you want to rhyme. Slay lay, it. I like that. I like that that rhyme there. That's nice. Did he sleep with the giant? You know what? I wouldn't be able to tell you yes or no. I was preoccupied cooking a knucklehead. Interesting, interesting. Uh, okay, well, I think I can. It's gonna take me like a you know a day or two to pick a good melody and and incorporating the drum solo. That's gonna be the, a trickier part. Uh, but uh, yeah, okay. I can uh, try to have it ready like tomorrow, day after. I look forward to hearing it tomorrow morning. Yeah. Uh, well, good no, job. like maybe like tomorrow evening, or you know. Uh, well, I'm leaving in the morning, babe. Maybe you just give me what you got in the morning, and then. I maybe put some more um, words in there for you. You seem to be struggling a bit with words. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, sure. That's a thing I can try and do. Come up with a, a quick song in less than mm. twelve hours. That's that seems feasible. <laughs> I knew you were the man for it. Uh, and if you do a good job, I would pay you to make a song about my horns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's. <laughs> That's a that's gonna be a first for me, but we'll we'll give it our best go, I suppose. Well, I'll see you in the morning then. Uh, yeah, see you in the morning. No. Okay, I'll walk away. Uh, I'll go back to. He's like, st stop playing, and he's like now like. 
like you see him like his like eyes kind of like up like in the back of his head a little he's trying to think of like tap out a new rhythm and try to what the hell rhymes with ogre moger smoker oh, this is not good and he seems like visibly flustered I'm writing a song right now. Are you, you about your horn? <laughs> no, for the bard to sing later on. It'll be a secret. I'm sorry, guys. Melandra and Kara are just kind of talking back and forth about like what happened in the cave and uh, all the different like little rooms that you guys went into and the depictions on the walls and the like the semi-rated uh, like tombs and things like that. How many glares do I get? Uh, not you didn't get any yet. Uh, she didn't hear your whole exchange over there. She was talking with Melandra. Uh, Davos got a Davos got a across the room glare with about the one arm joke, but you know, Lyra's a Lyra's a tough a tough person. She can handle it. Ooh, there we go. Um. So like uh, you see the two of them are talking. So uh, so, so, so uh, a spellcaster of some kind, and there was just a pearl and a wand sitting in a tomb. And Carol's, yeah, and it just uh, just that was it. That was the only thing that really seemed in there. Well, we saw a frozen lake of some, like a frozen pond with some sort of half naked statue underneath. And Melander's kind of like, this place does not surprise me at all anymore uh, it's uh, about that time as, as the night continues to go on that uh, a, a small like dwarfish fellow kind of stumbles into the into the back of the of the tavern there and he's got like a overcoat on and you can see that there is some um, some like snow on it, like it, you know, like he's been out in outside outdoors for a little bit. Uh, small dwarfin fellow, and you can see uh, Lyra kind of notices as he comes in. He goes, "Hi, it's Shandar. Perfect. We were just talking about you tonight." A little gruff, kind of uh, throws off his overcoat and like sets it to the side. A couple other like dwarves follow in behind him. Um, and they all go and like settle up on a table to the to the north. Well, it's our. Where's Snow White? Uh, <laughs> I see our traveling parties uh, decided to make uh, make make themselves comfortable another night. I think that we're gonna stay for a while. Oh, are you now? You're not just going to take off uh, into the woods for another two days like you did before? Yeah, you know, there's somebody had to help go get the mead instead of, like, letting the town be ravaged. Well, you definitely, did a, you definitely did a good thing for the town. Unfortunately, some of us also have jobs here in the town, keeping making, making sure that we can continue to supply this mead. The cask, the barrels, and all of that for the rest of the uh, ten towns. We don't all have the luxury to just throw down our, throw down our gloves and and take off at the first sight of adventure. Yeah, I I think uh, you know maybe you should hire somebody, create a new job, and they could be the person who watches the mead so it doesn't get stolen again. Well, me and my friends are thinking of taking a bit more. Uh, protective measures around the town to make sure that sort of thing doesn't happen again. Uh, like what? Uh, well, for start, when I get elected speaker, I'll be sure to uh, shore up the defenses around here. Uh, maybe actually create some some sort of fencing so that you know the, the random creature can't just stumble into our place. <clears throat> Um, I think it'll, by the time I'm done being speaker and then you get to be speaker, I think most of the problems will, uh, you know, have, have gone by the wayside, but I like that spirit. 
that's the attitude. Always looking. How long's the term? Do I know that? Uh, you know that it's undefined. It's town to town, so it's just whatever. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you yeah, know, always and, thinking many years into the future. It, it, with with all of the the uh various threats and the, and especially with the bitterness over the past like year or two uh, from the bitter cold, it's like. It's really just about how long can you last, uh, more so mm-hmm. than. Where the hell is my? Sorry, I'm trying to find my dwarf token that I was going to drop in here, so you guys can actually. There's actually someone to look at. Um, is there seven of them? Uh, there are not seven. No, there's just uh, just <laughs> about just about three or four. Um, all right, we'll have to find it later. I thought I did it, but I guess I did not. Um. Oh, he, he kind of looks over at uh, Olivessa, uh, and so I see you decided to back out of the race and and throw your support behind uh, a random traveler, someone who just happened to stumble into town. And she looks at him and kind of smirks and polishes off like the meat in her cup. And she goes, aye, I did. Unfortunately, I don't much like having to deal with people problems and frankly uh even some random traveler stumbling into town would do a much better job than you i believe and they kind World of star. <laughs> they kind of uh scoff at each other and shander kind of heads over to his table to sit down with his his group Can the queen sit down with the group? Of dwarves? Yep. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to. They're probably... Uh, and probably r- like it. Remind me real quick. Sorry, uh, go ahead. No, that's it. They just say they're sitting up there. Um, the, uh, the Shander, that he and his people make the mead, or they make the barrels. Um, let me pull up exactly what they do uh, so I don't lie to you here but I believe that they're I thought they were their miners but um, no he's the loggers yeah so he's uh, they, they all have like that sort of like I don't know rustic like um, outdoorish look to them um, they uh, they would be they'd go to the forest to the north you know, chop down whatever and use that to like bring back for the cast, to bring back for firewood, etc. So, um, oh, that triggers the quiz. Olivessa would have explained that to you probably in some sort of detail mm-hmm. while you guys are around here having drinks. Uh, you so you sit, <laughs> sit down at the table with the other loggers, yep, yep, and I'll pull out one of the flies and I'll put it in the middle of the table. One of your what? The flies for Davos oh. that he was handing around, his hand dance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh. They all kind like of look at you. What's that? Yeah, I'll just, like, place it down on the table, and I'll sit down and be like, Wow, you guys look like a tough son of bitches. Have you met this guy before, old Davos? He saved the town here, you know? They, like, all, like, look over your, your big, like... <laughs> Uh, bulky shoulder at him and then they start looking at each other and start speaking in uh, dwarfish to each other you can hear like this like snicker here and there and they like set their mugs like on top of your flyer like very like um, passive aggressively like a little bit of mead comes off and like spills on the flyer how did you mass produce these flyers anyway actually I, I was hoping that wasn't going to come up. <laughs> that. Con- so, can you conjure them? Yeah. No. Nah, so you're the one flyer that you have maybe hastily made. Uh, <laughs> is uh, dude, Yeah, I didn't start thinking about the logistics of your campaigning right now. It's already <laughs> off to a suspect start. He stole a bunch of uh, the dwarf's flyers and just scribbled in his own name. I don't even know if Shander's got flyers anyway. It's a, it, it's not a. It's not like this is like a off the beaten path town they don't have like a printing press or anything like that for uh you see there were a lot of skins in the cave that we were at yeah was that right yeah while people were resting 
I I made a, a a very elementary ink out of some ash and water from okay. uh, the fire there, and that's dirt. You made dirt. Scribbled up, scribbled <laughs> up a couple of a uh, couple of couple of flyers. So at best, we're at like stick figure level flyer right now. Yeah, these are finger painted. I mean, they're the best. They're the best ones in town. Okay. <laughs> so well, they're, they're the only ones in town, so I guess that's possibly true. <laughs> So just to clarify, I, I'm handing out like a piece of skin that's got some dirt <laughs> covered in it. <laughs> this is a fly, and as soon as they put a mug of ale on it, it like all washes away. <laughs> yeah, it's like already gone, yeah. <laughs> so okay. they they don't really pay you much mind. I mean, they, uh, like I said, they, they're kind of chittering and dwarfish among, amongst each other. Kind of rude to, um, you know, someone just comes down to talk to you and you're all just talk in a different language it's quite rude oh it's quite rude to sit down and put your friend's skin drawing in front of us and then just start passive aggressively campaigning for someone other than our mate here doesn't that seem quite rude it's not rude i'm sending out information everywhere i don't see you i don't know who he is well you never stopped to ask did you well, he's not doing a very good job campaigning if I don't know who he is, is he? You're not even from here. What do you mean? Well, exactly. You don't even get a vote. You're welcoming to You don't even get a vote in the I town. I can vote. If he becomes <laughs> speakers, I can vote. Anyone who lives in this town. You don't live here. I do now. Where at? My bed's just over there. I've already laid in it. What, what bed are you pointing to? <laughs> uh, that's Lyra's bed. And? It's big enough. Look, mate, we don't want any trouble. We've had a long day. We've been out, out in the freezing, our, freezing our nips off, cutting down trees for wood we can't even burn half the time. We just want to drink our ale. You say cutting down trees? Aye, we cut down trees to make the cask and the firewood and anything else. Some of them, they've been dead for years anyway, so it's more about clearing out the land just to make room for new trees to grow as well. As long as they're dead, Wolfgard will rip your soul out if you cut the living trees in his areas. Who the hell is Uthgard? Oh... Spend one of my rages to like spawn one of the ancestral spirits, the uh, shaman that resides inside of them. I uh, said, like, the Quinn. Right. And so then just, just like. <laughs> the, like, ex ancestral spirit just kind of starts walking by. Mm. And I say, Ulfgard is one of the most powerful deities in the Nork here. He gives me this power. And if I ever see you cutting a living tree in my presence, I'll just make you a little bit shorter. Oh, oh, oh okay, mate. Like, you know, we don't, we don't want any trouble. Uh, and see, now we know a little more about each other, and, uh, and we've made some progress. I'm going to leave now. But... I'm going to leave you with this message. Vote Davos. <laughs> Alright. And they go back kind of like chittering and dwarfish. No, walk over. Back to Davos. Hey Davos. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why you take on a visage of a dwarf. They suck. Is there, uh, what's that? They're not that bad. They all got anger issues. They're a little short-sighted. <laughs> you can't tell it's your own, uh, your own joke. <laughs> oh, he did. Oh, what page it. is that on in the rulebook? 
Uh, it's not in the rule book. <laughs> I'll, I'll look. House rule. House rule. <laughs> I guess I don't have a drum. You can borrow mine. Thank you. <laughs> Let me see. All right, I think I finally got these guys. Found them. Here we go. Da -da -da -da. Bam. Bam. Well, they're all the same exact dwarf. They just have different colors. So entirely different dwarfs. Entirely, entirely different. different. One's dancing on the table. You know what? Oops. Here we go. Uh, so we'll say we'll say Goldilocks here is actually. Oh God, it keeps clicking so aggressively. Uh, Goldilocks here is the uh, is Shandar. Oh, no, no. I, I lied. I have a red one. He's Shandar. The Shandar. It's like Davos. I don't know why it clicks so much when it does. It's only because I'm using on my laptop there. I keep trying to just drag the screen and I keep left clicking. <laughs> That's why I keep doing it. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, as you guys sit around and continue to like, you know, just kind of rest and catch up from the day. At some point, Lyra does come around. He goes, "All right, sun's down, so buckle up, tidy up your put on, throw on your coats, and uh, get ready to uh, stay warm, however best you can." Goes around and puts like, you know, any of the fires that were out on that puts them out, and immediately you guys can kind of feel the. <laughs> The cold start to set in. What's Shandar's reaction to that? Is this just like normal for him? He doesn't care anymore. Uh, I mean, I think everyone in the everyone in in the hall kind of, you know, they let out like a sigh of like just gets disappointment, I guess. Um, but you know, they kind of all like skulkingly get up, finish off their meat, and begin to head out of the tavern and and head to their to each of their homes. So it's like you know, it's not it's not a not anything abnormal. It's just aggravating, I guess. Uh, Lyra comes by and and says, "So um, there's plenty of room here if you guys want to shore up and bed here. Um, there's a couple empty stalls in the back where your horses are being kept." Um, you could easily make like a quick makeshift uh, bed there, or uh, again, the speaker's house has some. It has a bed, I believe. I don't know. I've never quite been in there myself, but um, it can be made available to you as well. And of course, we have like little, like I said, homes here and there that have a spare room. Uh, they'd be happy to put you up for 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 the night. I don't. I don't know that I want to take the speaker room yet. So I will take a room upstairs. Uh, there's no upstairs, dear. There's to the left, uh, the hay, and to the right is my room, and that is all the magic that there is here. Left is hay. To the right is that. Got it. And you said speaker's house. Ah, yeah. Each speaker. It's usually awarded their own house um, for the as a thank you, I suppose, for doing their job. Gosh, house would be nice, but that might hurt the election. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna sleep in the hay. That's your choice. Um, do you guys all want to just stay in uh, in the meat hall? I guess so. Where there's no inn here, that we no, th there's not one of any substantial size. Good, good meat is simply the brewery, huh? Just, just yeah, just the. Uh, it looks like someone's in the this place. I'm gonna. He's just you know. And I just give him a look. Yeah, he's. <laughs> I'll move him for you. <laughs> he's been doing hay for about. 
six hours now, so he's excuse, probably good. Excuse and done. me. Yeah. yeah. I just give him a grunt. Uh, uh, okay. Well, it, uh, is there anything else before uh, calling it a night? Not on my end. I will take. Um, no, I'm good. All good? Yep. All right, Caro and uh, Melandra. Yeah, where just, they sleep? They'll just make a little makeshift something, I don't know, in the corner here. Maybe, like, take this big-ass uh, bear bear rug and, like, head to a corner and just kind of wrap up and, and uh, use each other to try and stay warm some. Most people probably sleeping in their armor, I'd imagine, because it's warmer than, than not. Come by, they check on their horses before they go to bed. I have to add Caro's horse here to one of the stables. Um, but uh, yeah, as you guys, so you guys try to get comfortable and like, you know, make the best the best uh, the situation you can. At least you're indoors this time and not. You know, in in a in a cave, uh, off, off in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you guys all fall asleep pretty quickly. Uh, a taxi, you uh, you find yourself having uh, a similar sort of uh, kind of chaotic dream yeah. of of um, running through running through this wintry woodlands area, and uh, you can hear behind you this this like um, this shouting and this sort of uh, this like. It sounds like a, like a fight going on. You can hear the clash of like metal against metal, and you know you see this this figure in a hood just release this sort of electrical energy into the air, and you know it just it like eviscerates basically like two or three people, and then she turns and kind of looks at you, uh, like it stuns you for a second because you didn't even know you were visible, and she raises her hand and like again lets out this electrical energy that like just shoots towards you, and it's almost like you can feel it. It doesn't hurt you, but it's like it almost jolts you awake. But instead of coming awake, you actually find that you're in the middle of like complete darkness and you can't see or hear anything in front of you. So I'm not, Oh, can I smell anything? Uh, you do not smell anything. I know, I know you want to use that. So it's, just, so whenever you no, can. it's fine. So I'm just like in a void. It you seems, just, it just seems like you're in a void. Yeah. And I th- okay. And I think I've woken up. I don't know. Do you? Uh, I don't know. I pinch myself. <laughs> uh, it uh, it hurts, but you're still there's still darkness all around you. You look to the left, and it's just empty darkness. You look to the right, it's just empty darkness. Am I dead? Uh, I don't know. Do you feel dead? <laughs> no, I still feel that <laughs> pinch. Oh, that's good. So you're not dead. As you turn, uh, you kind of keep looking around, and like it's real. It's, it's kind of disorienting because there's no way of like uh, figuring out this the the size and scale and shape of where you're at. So you turn again and, and looking in a direction you know you've looked already, and you actually see the back of of Caro. Kind of standing there, like just like looking into the distance, into the darkness as well. Uh, call out to Caro. Uh, as soon as you say something, she kind of jumps and like uh, she screams a little bit. And I was like, "Jesus, Scott where are we?" I don't, I, I don't know. I didn't even. I didn't even know we were anywhere. I thought I was just floating in the darkness by myself for a while. Were you? Is this where you ended up when you woke when you woke up? I, I, I am here. I don't know how I got here. I don't know under what circumstances, but uh, uh, this is. I laid down in the meat hall and I woke up, and this is where I'm at. Hmm. This must have something to do with the items that we've taken from the crypt. 
Oh, I didn't touch the items, though. You did. Well, that's true. And as you kind of, uh, like, reach around and feel, you don't even have them on you. All you have is your, like, very standard set of, like, you know, your armor and your... Uh, you use a, you're using a, a mace? Yeah. Yeah. Caro's got her shield and her warhammer, and that's really it. I don't know how we got here. I don't know how we got here either, but we better figure it out quickly. Where's Where's Davos and DeQuinn? They were in the stalls next to me, also sleeping. Uh... But they're not here now. <clears throat> well, that's... uh. That's a bit concerning. And uh, as she kind of looks around and she looks up and, you know, again, where there should be darkness, there's actually like uh, a slight like like twinkle that you see. Uh, and it kind of it kind of like comes in and then like just fades out almost as quickly. Uh, you almost wouldn't even have seen it if you haven't if she hadn't looked up in time. She goes, you see that? And in the in the distance, there's like another one just kind of pops in and pops out. Do we walk towards them? Are they, they seem very far or close? As if, as you start to take steps, like you can't actually move and you feel your feet like impacting something on the floor. It's not really sure what it is, but there's something there. And um, as you do move, even, even though it's above you, as you look up and, and, take steps it almost seems like you're also like being lifted up off the ground towards it so you are it, it does seem like it gets a little brighter and a little closer and they're never in the same spot it seems or at least there's multiple of them uh, but you are able to actually move closer to them carol's <clears throat> like what is happening here i feel like i drank some bad tea some bad mead uh, the mead was well I think I only had a glass or two I don't I don't know I've never really never really pounded mead before is this what happens no nothing like this so Dax has slammed a couple meads in his time yeah <laughs> um, blips in the distance. can I try to make light at all do you have that spell? I have no. I have sacred flame. That's it. Prepared, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd have to pull up what she has. Uh, I actually don't know off the top of my head, but I'm just gonna assume she can't as well. Another twinkle. Another one. This one kind of almost seems like right in front of you, Odaxi, and then it fades away. <laughs> uh can't move and it's dark you can move your hands and everything work you know normally oh but you said when i walked what what was happening when i walked when you walked you were doing the motion and it but because there's nothing around you to give you a sense of, of travel it's hard to tell you know if you're moving but you did get closer to the the wherever these little little flickering lights are Oh, well, I'll keep going to the lights then. Uh, yeah, I mean, now now it feels like you're kind of being surrounded by them, whereas before they were, like, in the distance. So they're kind of all around you at this point, flickering in and out. There seems to be a little less than a dozen. She goes, well, they I are actually one? kind of pretty. You could try, yeah. I'll try to grab one. If the next The next one I see... Just yeah, reach as, out. As it fades in and you touch it, there's kind of like a, a shimmer, and then the light stays present in front of you, like in the distance. Like it's like again, distance is hard, so you just kind of reach out to where you think it is, and you don't feel anything. But now the light has has stayed, and it's present there. It doesn't illuminate anything more than the in the darkness around you, but it stopped blinking in and out. And then others in the distance are still blinking in and out as well. Uh, 
by distance i mean like you know six feet if even as you touch one carol goes did you did, did it hurt did you feel anything i don't think so no oh that's kind of cool and so she reaches out to one near her that she sees flickering and she touches it and it stays as well let's try to light them all up so just go keep walking towards them and making them stay lit she goes okay but don't uh don't stray too far. I don't want to be stuck here by myself. And she kind of turns and... She, All right, I'll stay close based on her voice, kind of. She, like, pl- touches a few more, and then they, they also kind of light up. And then there's, like, two or three around you, Odaxi, you know, just kind of floating in your, I guess, your area of the of the empty void. Yeah, I'll just try to light them up, too, and see if this solves anything. So six, seven, eight, nine, as you like kind of like keeping count as you touch. And as soon as you touch the last one, uh, a small like stream of light shoots from it and it connects to another one and another one and another one. You know, all the ones you've lit up and they all are actually shooting these like small, tiny like spectral lights out at each other. Um, and they start to like start to form some sort of almost just like a constellation in front of you. Um, recognizable or no it's becoming recognizable slowly as it progresses forward you can actually see there's like um, these two arms uh, coming uh, coming off from the top and then from these from these like arm looking pieces the, a chain it looks like is kind of forming and coming down from each side uh, these circles looping and kind of intertwining with each other come to these uh, a bowl actually on each chain so two bowls floating in kind of this in this eerie blue sort of ethereal light is it like a scale it does exactly it looks very similar to a scale it does actually and as soon as what it finishes is this? as soon as the lights finish forming amongst each other you feel like a i feel like a thud on you and carol kind of jumps as well she goes oh jesus what was that and then like you feel like in your bag, uh, it seems heavier than before. It's, uh, I'll reach in my bag and it's probably the Pearl of Power, maybe. Sure. Or, or your... the other item. Uh, it is your reach around. The wand. Yep. Um, you feel these like cold sort of, uh, metallic stone things that, you're not sure what they are, but they're they, one's on one. I one not sharp, but they're they're um, chiseled. So you feel like you're like oh, like something that like, kind of pokes you. It doesn't break the skin, but you're like these. There's some sort of shape to these things. They've got some weight to them, you know. Like they're they're not. And they're not something that was in my bag before. I don't I don't think so. And that, there's two, three. Oh. Are they? all the same weight they feel like it yeah um and you as you're like kind of like feeling around cautiously in your bag you see carol reaches in hers and she pulls out like this this uh very pristine looking uh wooden boat very nice detail and she's kind of eyeballing it and she goes well that's strange it's it's one of my father's boats it's got our seal on the side I just have some rocks. <laughs> have you pulled them out yet? Uh, yeah, I'm holding them. So as you're holding them in your hand, you see that there's uh, there's shapes to them. One's in the shape of an owl. Uh, one's in the shape of a dragon. And one looks like... Uh, it kind of looks like... It's got like a, an orb affixed to one arm that comes up and over and down the side and like to a base. So it almost looks like, you know, a lantern of some kind uh, on this thin arm that holds up this this rather large orb. It almost looks like it would be fragile, but, like, it's not. Like, this is, this is one piece of rock carved into this. And in the distance, you kind of hear and see that, like, shimmering blue scale kind of, like, just waving back and forth. Now it's, like, permanent and, like, a fixture. In in, in 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 a sea of nothingness. Okay, so it was an owl. An owl. A 
dragon and what looks like a lantern, more or less. I picture the dongle on, like, the end of, like, that fish that, like, kills, you know, like, in the very depths of the... Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Got it. You know what I mean? An under, like, an, 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 yeah, like an angler. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like that It's kind of like that arm. And it, and it has a base? And it, it, has, does have a, it does have a base, yeah. So it would, like, sit on the ground if, you, if there was ground to set it on. Okay, and she has a boat. And she has a boat. Um, and with the with her pulling the boat out, um, Davos and DeQuin, you are not in darkness. You are actually both of you kind of like come to in your senses, and you are in a uh, a wooden fixture of some sort. You're like just you're just leaning up against a wooden wall with wooden floors, and you can't see anything more than five feet away from you, and the, and the walls on each side. Are we like in the same room? You do not see anyone near you. <clears throat> okay. Um. Hello. As you say hello, DeQuinn, you hear it. Odaxi hears it, and Carol hears it as well. And Carol kind of looks out in the void, and she goes, "Uh, hello." And you all hear her voice. Odaxi, it seems close to you because you're by her. But for a DeQuinn and Davos, it seems like it's kind of off. And it's like just almost think, like around them. I think I heard Davos. I'll I'm call ready. out for Davos. And see if he hears me. He does. You guys all can hear each other essentially at this point. But you I'm can't see. In a wooden see... room. Can you see us? No. Okay. A wooden room where? I don't... I don't know. Is DeQuinn uh, with you? Uh... Hello? <laughs> DeQuinn, where it's are you at? Like, I don't know. Does anyone know anything right now? I know I stink. <laughs> Davos, uh, you, you kind of God. hear you kind of hear to Quinn, like both oh. less it's less of that sort of ethereal booming voice of Caro and Odaxi. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I, I'd like to start like feeling around my wooden prison for anything. It's like it's about like you know five six feet wingspan from you know like out. It's it's very small. Like if, if you were to stand, you would have maybe like a, a half foot of clearance above you. Um, and then taking, if you take a step forward, you will find that there are floor to ceiling uh, metal bars in a prison like cell. Hmm. Uh, is the Quinn's the same? Basically, a cell with bars in yeah. front of him. Yeah. If you do the same. And come to the bars, you'll actually, across a hallway, a narrow hallway, you'll see Davos as well, with his uh, hand behind the bars there. Yo, that mead must have been pretty nasty. <laughs> as you say that, uh, <laughs> uh, a, a figure kind of in the hallway to your left, you can't see down the hallway uh, at all, uh, steps through, uh, and just quiet you. And kind of stumbles like past uh, in front of both of your both of your gates, and you see uh, a minotaur, much like yourself, to Quinn, just kind of walk in front of you, like fa almost like fading from ex coming from nothing and then fading into nothing, as he just walks what? through that hallway. What color was the minotaur? Uh, he was a blackish black uh, black hair, and then like kind of a a, a, a darker tan skin. I'm gonna try and bust these bars. Okay, make a strength check. Do this here. Oh, sorry, that was a strength saving three. Seven plus three instead of two, so eighteen. Are you give it everything you've got to like kind of just? Are you just gonna try to like pull them apart? Um, basically, yeah. Or try and break it off its hinges, I guess. Yeah, is you you feel like you're you're 
making some progress and you can actually feel the 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 bars give a little and then the second you stop and take a break they just almost like snap and realign back into place what is this trickery is my uh, are my bars locked i assume they are locked yeah and you uh, frankly there's like a, a a a padded lock on the side like to the to the right of each of the <clears throat> uh, cages um but it is locked shut yeah Interesting. Um, I, I guess I'd want to relay everything that I'm that I'm seeing to Adaxi and Caro. How the hell did you wind up in a prison, Adaxi? What what do you have in your hand? I have these. Were they stone? You said yeah. Stone. Yeah. Stone figures, an owl, a dragon, and uh, a, bo- a bobbing spear thing. Oh. I can't, I don't really know what it is. Okay. And you have a ship. And I have a ship, my father's ship. Well, it's got our, at least it's got our crest on it here on the side. Um, and they're in jail. And there's floating scales of some sort. What else is in there? What else is in your rooms, Davos and Dequin? Dequin's okay. like shaking his friggin' door <clears throat> trying to get out and he's just yelling out, Artis, is that you? Come back here! And he's just like raging at this fucking door. <laughs> If you guys look down the hallway where the Minotaur kind of like walked away from, um, it's now a little less dark and you can kind of see there's some stairs that go up to another level. And on the, uh, on the stairs, on a, like near the stairs near a hook, you do see like a ring of keys. How far away would you say? Pretty far, probably 20, 30 feet. Okay, I'd like uh, Mage Hand. To try to go pick up them keys for us. Okay. Yeah, as you cast Mage Hand, and it starts to like the ethereal hand kind of slides off your body. Um, it starts to move towards those keys and try to uh, wrestle them from the from the hook. Uh, but for some reason, it can't actually make purchase on these keys at all. Like. The hand just kind of passes through the wall, almost like, you know, it doesn't... There's not really a wall there. Can I Uh, run back and, like, charge forward and try and use the horns to batter down this door? I think it's only, like, five-foot cells, you know, ten-foot cell tops. I don't think you'd even get enough... You could try to get the momentum to to bang it open. Yeah, I'd Superman off the wall or whatever I have to do. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, let's see. Are you going to make a attack roll? Is that like, I think that's the thing to do here, right? Yeah, I can make an attack roll. For sure. <laughs> yeah, it is 11. Hit an iron bar. I mean, you, Your couldn't, horns. you couldn't have missed the iron bars, right? Like, you know, if you tried. Um, it was more about uh, just, you know, seeing... I guess how sure of an attack you had. As soon as you leverage, as, yeah. As soon as you make contact with the bars, um, Caro kind of goes ah, and like, like looks at the at the boat in her in her hand. She's like, it, it's it moved, and she's like Aww. holding it up. And what the hell was that? Uh, is it still dark that Kara and I can't see each other, or can you can we see each other? Yeah, you Okay. You, there's like, go over and like tap on the boat. Give it three big three big taps on the boat. Odaxi and DeQuinn, you hear like the thud kind of echo around you. You mean DeQuinn and Davos? De, uh, yeah, DeQuinn and Davos. Sorry. Yeah, okay, got it. Got it. Uh I think they're in the brig. The, the brig of what? Of the boat. Of this thing? <laughs> they're they're tiny? <laughs> it seems Things seems to be seem to be correlating to that. 
I don't know quite what's going on. She, like, holds it up to her head to see if she can, like, peek into any of, like, the little portholes or anything like that. I don't see anything. <laughs> well, maybe uh, not. I'll, but... I'll minor illusion, like, some fireworks in the hallway or something. Trying to get some lights. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's absorbed instantly. Almost like it's, you know, magically... Uh, magically dark, you know, like it, the the lights pop off and you can see the firework, but it illuminates nothing, almost like there's nothing beyond the cells that you're in. Like it even, you can even see it go into like uh, like into space, like you can see it move a firework move away from you, and then just kind of dissipate into nothing. What do we do with this scale? Carol kind of starts like looking at it and well, should we see if we can get closer to it or yeah and just try to is there any there's no markings on it or anything no markings um and it's two just two bowls just two bowls yeah as you guys step closer to it um it's like it almost seems like it shrinks down and becomes you know before it looked like this like collection of like large stars and things like in the distance, but now it's like in front of you and it's almost like it's just floating there like an actual size of a, a set of scales. Hmm. Do you have anything you want to measure or? I mean, I have these objects, but I don't know what it just besides just putting them there and trying anything. Should I put something in there and just see what happens? I don't know. I mean, what could go wrong at this point? We're already trapped in a, a, a murky abyss. I guess put the boat in one of them. Okay. And she, like, kind of gingerly steps up to, like, the left scale and then, like, looks at the right scale and then kind of looks at you like do you think it matters which one I put it in no okay I don't she, know. she just sets it in the left <laughs> one uh, as she sets it in the bowl fills with water and the boat becomes like uh, a floating in like this this like bowl of water in the left scale um, and it's just kind of floating there like you know it looks like an actual boat on on the ocean except smaller and to Quinn and Davos, you now feel this sort of like gentle rocking back and forth. I don't know if you guys, I don't think you guys have spent much time, Davos. You might have spent some time on a boat. Um, to Quinn, probably never. Um, uh, no, but, no. Um, so it's a, it's a little unsettling for you, Davos. If you, if you have spent time on a boat, I don't know how much you have, but uh, it, you know, you can sense that kind of natural rocking back and forth. Uh, do we have our uh, weapons and gear with us? You guys do not in your prison cells. Okay. Uh, the scale tips down, you know, like it would as if, you know, it was unbalanced. And you can kind of see that uh, as it starts to slowly slide down, the water in the bowl starts to rise a little. And... A moment passes, and a moment pa passes, and De Quinn and Davos, you start to feel wet sensation at your feet, kind of starting to climb up your feet and your ankles. Ugh, hate that. It's now getting to, like, your knee area. Uh, pick something else. Uh, it's we're gonna, we're gonna, I'll, we're I'll gonna try to... I'll, I'll try to balance it out. So you're gonna put... Go ahead. The owl? With the owl? Okay. I'll you set put the owl in the right one. You set the owl in the right one, and the scale stops sinking some, and the water stops rising slightly. Um, you can see that the boat and the wa on the water seems to be a little heavier than the owl, uh, so the water is still rising, but you've slowed it down some. I'll put the dragon there, too, then. I'll just put them both there. As you uh, put them both there... To what they... end, I have no idea. <laughs> you offset... I've... 
uh, scales offset a little more actually in favor of the dragon and the owl and the water starts to recede from the boats you guys uh, and it starts to not from the boat but from your room it starts to stop overflowing from your room and it's now dry again and actually your feet and your uh, your your legs they're, they're perfectly dry but there was never water in the first place So is it balanced now, or or now it, now the right is too heavy? It, the right's probably a little too heavy right now. Um, I get, uh, the only uh, other object object I have is that ball lantern thing. Mm -hmm. uh, <sighs> so there's... I could put that. I could put that with the boat. Did anything change in the room for you guys, or no? For us, uh, I don't know. I, I really that the, the water, like it doesn't feel wet. Is If we fill the room with water, would you be able to swim out of the top? Let's try. I don't know. It didn't get deep enough to see if we were buoyant or anything. What's above us? Is it ceiling? Or... It seems like it. it. Well, how would they get out the top? I don't know. I'm just trying to offer oh. solutions here. I'm sorry. One, the one... is raging the whole time, so. <laughs> <laughs> just every now and then you see the boat, like the like the ripples in the water underneath the boat from where he just clashes against the horn. Or his horns clash against the metal. And there's no keys or anything in there with you guys? There was, they said there was uh, keys, right? Yeah. There were, yeah, there were keys down the hallway. I just couldn't, like, grab them or touch them. They're just hanging on a, it's, what do they look like? Does keys. it have some sort of float on it? <laughs> like it would float off the hook if the water is buoyant? I mean, as you look around the, the, into the space between the bars and kind of like look at the keys like with one eye and try to get a good look it's a little fuzzy for you because you've been headbutting the uh, rails over and over and over as far as i know um but you can make out that there seems to be some sort of piece of wood also tethered to the keys could they could float off the hook So fill her up. So we want to. So I'll, I'll pick up the. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the I love ad hoc intelligence rolls. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick. I'll, I'll. I'll let the boat sink again. I'll pick up the owl and the dragon. Okay, and as it does, like the the boat starts to like move down on the left scale, and the water again starts to rise up to from the ankles, the knees, the thighs, the stomach, um, and. The water's not cold. It's not warm. It's just, it's just, it's actually more uncomfortable that it's neither. And as, as the liquid starts to rise, it gets to your chest, your neck, your mouth. Uh, Davos, you first, since you're a little shorter than uh, De Quinn, and then comes above De Quinn's as well. And you can see that water has uh, begun to like fill the entire space around there. Can I try to like float over and look? Yes. See what's happening with the keys. As you look through the bars, you can see the keys are like they've been tugged off of the uh, off of the rail that they were on, and they've now like they're floating at the top of the uh, scratching at the ceiling up there at the top of the hallway. I'm gonna uh, like bang on the walls. I'm sure I can't like shout, at, or can I? Can I try <laughs> to talk? You can try. Are you guys are you guys okay? Did you get the keys? I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna try to say uh, drain, drain the boat, and if that doesn't sound like any words, then I'm just gonna bang on the walls. You just <laughs> okay. Caro and put... Dax, you, you just hear, yeah. This I'm, gonna, like, oh, I'm, gonna put the, I'm gonna quickly put the owl or the dragon back on the right scale. Okay, as you do, uh, it again it starts to rebalance itself out, and, and again they're slightly heavier, not by too much, but uh, they're slightly heavier. So like the uh, the water does, takes a moment and. There's probably a sense of panic, I would think, from DeQuinn, who I don't know who's ever really been exposed to the water as much, and Davos, like, it takes a second for 
the actual like room to drain but it does eventually there's like a a, a a pocket of air start to form at the top and then come down down the head the chest the torso and like the and the leg area and you are again once again dry and in the distance you hear uh like the clang of metal kind of as it just like flops onto the ground is, is it sliding down the hallway or is it just sitting, sitting on the ground uh it's just sitting on the ground i'll say what, put, put what? more weight well i was gonna say i could pick up the boat and like tilt it can That'll you mention work too. It that seems maybe easier <laughs> so i'll pick up the boat off the scale again out of the water and just kind of are, are they near the front or the back of the ship uh, do we know yeah it's hard to tell tilt it all right i'll, I'll right tilt it i'll going. tilt it towards the front now the front will be down and see where the okay what's happening as i want to like reach my arm up far <laughs> to try to catch this key as soon as you tilt it you can hear it and it starts to slide closer to davos and to quinn how much are you tilting it like not not quite 45 no. degrees but almost there yeah Okay, so it's it's moving, it's starting to pick up a little speed as it gets as it's getting closer to you guys, and it's traveling down this very strange hallway with like nothing quite visible on the other sides of it. But it's starting to pick up speed, and it's coming straight for you guys. I grab them. All right, I'm ready. Catch. Make a dexterity. Make a dexterity <laughs> check. Let's see. You can tell me to stop tilting too. Whatever. Yeah, I want to do that when he's right in front of one in front of us. <laughs> uh, never mind. Luckily, uh, it Odaxi hears you kind of see it at the last second, and so he kind of like stops, and then the, the keys just slide to a halt, like like in your hand, almost as if you know you guys have been practicing this all your like all your life, uh, and you have the yep. keys to something. I don't know what they're keys to. I want to see if they fit in the door. Um. You try the first one, it doesn't seem to fit, but the second one does. I will unlock my door and get out. Okay. And I will go immediately to try to unlock uh, the Quinn's door as the well. Angry Minotaur, <laughs> pounding at the bar still. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, again, it's not it's not the first key you try, but the second key, and it unlocks his door. As soon as the door is open, I'm sprinting off towards the Black Minotaur. Okay. Uh, so Davos goes, hey, go, hey, old buddy, don't worry, I'll get you out. And then you open the door and he just smashes you out the way and just starts sprinting uh, back towards the direction of the keys. Um, as you start running, like, you're heading towards this area of the stairs that, and you can see the stairs and they're in the distance, but for whatever reason, like you don't actually get closer to them. And as you're now running out into the open hallway, uh, you start to see this repeating images of like, sets of bars and then like a little wooden a wooden like wall and then sets of bars over and over and over Let's turn back to davos is he pretty far away or is he pretty close he's pretty close actually <laughs> davos let's try going up the stairs man uh, and i'd, I'd relay to odaxi and carol what's going on because we're out of the cells so you play some any, crazy spell. Any bit of driftwood around that I can use to bash something with? There's no <laughs> driftwood inside. There's only bars and <coughs> and the stairs in the distance. Oh, I've got to control my temper. <laughs> let's, let's try the stairs. Oh, God, the stairs. Yeah, it's a bit similar to what you, to, you know, what DeQuinn was doing you guys are moving towards the stairs and uh, while they're doing that i'll just hand the boat back to sorry if i interrupted no you're fine um you hand it back i'll to just hand, hand the boat back to yeah back to carol and uh, instead i'll just put something I'll, I'll put the owl on one scale and the dragon on the other to see if that does anything okay um you can see that, like, you can get a sense of how how much each one weighs in comparison to each other, but like, there doesn't seem to really be any any sort of effect on the scales. Uh, the water's drained once, oh, okay. you the, once you pluck the boat out. The water's gone. Um, Caro kind of is like, 
looking like again she's trying to like see if she can see inside any of the like the little port windows or anything <laughs> um you guys are making motions toward the stairs but you're not making progress to getting closer and you turn back around and we seem to be stuck in the hallway you seem to be stuck yeah right where you were have been at maybe you've got a foot away not further you hear a little scuffling from one of the bars to your left what's there I don't know. It's dark. You don't see much. It looks much like your cell, except you can't see the walls of the back. It kind of like fades into that weird blackness. Is there anyone there? And you hear kind of in response to that, it's like your voice back at you. Is there anyone there? Creepy. Creepy. And then you hear it kind of, <laughs> you hear it in each of the other cells behind you. You hear creepy, 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 and all sorts of different tones and voices. The What's ceiling. going on in there? Uh, is there, like, the ceiling above? There's nothing. The stairs is raises no it's just obviously yeah it's just wood so i mean leading up the stairs does it is it like uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to see yeah it's hard to see kind of it kind of that same sort of murky fade and when the water um was entering the ship were we flamboyant like were we um floating uh, you're actually not you're just kind of standing there you didn't yeah. feel you didn't feel buoyant at all What were the three symbols you had? You had owl, An dragon. owl, a dragon, and a lantern or something. All right. Um, so you've used the owl, the dragon, but you haven't used the lantern. And when you put the ship on the scale, it filled with water. Now we can't see anything. Maybe perhaps the lantern may give us light of some sort. I'll put the lantern on the scale on the left, left one. Okay. Uh, you see the the light kind the, the darkness fades around you guys in the sh in this like wooden ship area, and the cells all become illuminated, and you see uh, these humanoid figures, one in each cell of just various different sizes and shapes. Uh, one's an elf, one's a dwarf, one's uh, you know a couple are humans, um, and they're all just kind of like sitting in, kind of like in the corner with their backs like hunched over, like hooded. Uh, something over there, oh, kind of covering their their faces, um, and they're just kind of sitting there. That's out with us or in the boat? That's in the boat. Okay. Um, do the stairs or the hallway illuminate up? Or they don't. The cells, but... They don't. Davos, as you look at each of the figures in the in the cells, you see kind of like a familiar sight of this, their skin pigments changing, and it's at one time there's feathers, and then all of a sudden there's scales, and then there's skin again. Like they're shape shifting. It's similar, yeah. Something they're doing something like that. And like the the fabric underneath there, um, that's covering like their shoulders. This is like very thin fabric. You can see it kind of like uh, bulging in some some areas when like they take a, a slide a size slightly like irregular or different than what they had before. And it actually seems like it's speeding up more. Do they react when either of us one go near a cell? Or do they just continue doing their freaky bone thing? <laughs> they don't seem to. They just seem to be doing their freaky bone thing. Oi. You in the cell. Oi, you in the cell. I love it. I love Your it. horns are immaculate. <laughs> you get no response. 
<laughs> Whoa. They do say, you, they, they all say your horns are immaculate. I feel a bit better. And in fact, behind you, Dequan, you hear someone say, your horns are immaculate. And you turn around, there's this like towering minotaur, the one that walked by earlier, the, the, the black fur and the, the golden skin, like the golden leather skin. He's probably standing like almost a foot taller than you. Horns like scraping against the top of this like non-existent wood. Do I recognize him? Uh, that doesn't seem familiar. You've only seen really what one other minotaur in your entire life. Yeah. Is it that one? No. <laughs> prisoners aren't supposed to be outside their cage. We're not prisoners. What it's have we for... done to be? It's prisoners. for your own good. Where are we? Almost doesn't even react to you, Davos. All the little people in the cages around you go, "Where are we? But where are we? Where are we?" Like in all these different tones, and and pitches. What do you mean it's for our own good? Prisoners aren't supposed to be in their cages. We're not. Are they the cages? And he's gonna headbutt you. I'll headbutt him back, I guess. It doesn't. <laughs> you don't even have a chance. The second his head comes in contact with yours, you see nothing but darkness. You see da De Quinn kind of falls limp in front of you, Davos, and the Minotaur takes like a step towards you. Uh-oh. I run the other Prisoners way. are supposed to be in their cages, and he headbutts you as well. The boat, uh, Audaxi and Carol, the, the scales start to kind of shine like slightly brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Um, and then like in an instant, in a flash... The bright light just kind of encapsulates everything in the room that was dark. And it's always blinding because before there was nothing and then now there's just everything and you can't see. And in that moment, you guys all kind of feel like the chill air and prickly sort of uh, uh, feeling of hay underneath you. And you wake up and the same exact uh, stalls that you guys laid down into rest. What the hell? And I think with that, we should take a quick break so that we can run to the restroom, refresh drinks, or anything like that. Perfect. Does that sure. sound good? Um, yes, yeah, so let's do that. And I will, uh, I will transition us to a quick break screen, and we can be right back in a second.
Sounds like for you guys when I have ten million dollars. Oh man! And all you had to invest, all you had to do was pay the uh, five thousand dollar transaction fee, right? That's right. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's a huge We're back net with game. Davos being um, <laughs> a major player in the African banking uh, market. So that's exciting for him. I was asked to keep the email told me to keep it a secret. So oh shit, I'm sorry. There goes that. Thanks for nothing. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Oh. So we escaped, but we don't really know how or why. I'm, I like my brain hurts. Sometimes dreams just be like that. So yeah, we're back. Uh, you guys are back in Goodmead. Uh, it is a new day. Um, Adaxi, you know, you still ha are unable to recover. Um, right. Any spell slots um, because you. Uh, have a frantic rest although the rest was a little frantic for everyone that time um you know dreams are weird sometimes it feels like you're in something for a long time and you weren't you know uh actually i guess i should say like uh, a lot of these patrons aren't in the bar right now because uh it is morning times so i can actually get get rid of some of these guys ba -ba -ba. do it without pinging every single one but i guess i have no choice ping away pinging away uh you guys see caro and uh melandra are are actually sipping some sipping some morning uh tea at the table uh lira is kind of with them and they are uh just chatting back and forth already awake and kind of um <clears throat> starting their day are they looking like a little weirded out? Uh, as you guys, if you guys are making your way there, uh, you would hear that they are like indeed. And, and Melandra's like, wait, so I'm sorry, what, where did the boat come from? And she's like kind of going over like, you know, uh, you hear her talking about these like stars and the scales and all this sort of um, uh, basically like recapturing what, like, what happened the night before. Mm -hmm. and Lyra's like and you're sure you didn't uh, you know partake in any uh, herb or grass from some of the other fellow patrons that night we all I think had the same shared experience oh, Two, kind of yeah Melanchia goes oh good morning uh, everyone I heard about your late night adventure yesterday. Yeah, it was something. Yeah, I don't want to do that again. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> maybe, um, hell, I don't know. Maybe, maybe all of your adventures in the, uh, previous previous uh verby caves somehow uh, maybe something related to the bones you found or magical fountain with the naked guy in a leaf i don't know Did, it's odd you all had the same dream and maybe less of a dream but some sort of interaction between each other Well, it wasn't really the same. We're just all partaking of it. Some of us were drowning in another one, and the other one was trying to survive. And I don't really understand what was going on with Adaxi and Caro. They said something about a lantern and dragon and gales of some sort. Did the scales uh, look like the ones on Caro's shield? They will, uh, they will try, like, the Caro will try and explain to you, like, the, uh, the scale, or the, the rocks, and, like, how the, or the stone pieces, and how they looked, and... Um... 
just to give you guys like an idea of like you know like that they were actually seeing physical items or whatever and versus mm-hmm. you know um uh, all of that and she's gonna look at you guys so we kind of let, lost track of you a bit after you got out of the cell were you able to see other parts of the ship or <clears throat> we we seemingly couldn't go anywhere even though we were moving we could make we were making any progress that sounds I mean, similar to what we had happening with the uh with you know, before we found the the scales, I suppose we were just that moving, was just darkness. Really. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. Well. Go ahead. No, nothing. <laughs> well, it's a it's a new day, um, and for the first time, I think we're all uh, of decent. Uh, strength and and health um so that's that's a win for us except i can't sleep well you know there's that i guess we're kind of at better strength melanger goes maybe it's your turn now to slowly freeze from the inside out (laughs) Uh, oh, there we go. Sorry, finally got the music working. Um, what do uh, what do we want to do? Do we do we need to do anything else here in this town, or do we continue? For, what's forward even at this point? I think we need to go to Brinchenda. Yeah, we still have our um. Well, we're still supposed to still meet someone there. I don't, you know, God knows if they're even alive in this place anymore. <clears throat> they haven't frozen to death. But, uh, it is supposed to be, um, a, an establishment from our order, so I do, like, Odaxi, perhaps they do have someone there who can actually help us with this curse. Right. <laughs> Davos just well, teleports it's... in. Uh, I'm magic. It does seem like if there's, you know, any sort of civilization to this place, it's there. And perhaps there might be a chance to run with Cephix. To what? Cephix. Oh, yeah. I forgot all about the madman on a murder spree around the Ten Towns. Jeez, it's another another problem we're gonna have to engage with at some point, I suppose. How long will it take us to get there? Um, you know that I think it's six hours or so. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it is. It's about six hours by by uh by formal road, like so. Uh, if you guys pull up your map, which I think I you know, have one in there, right? Like map of Icewind Dales. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see that you're kind of like, it's kind of like around the way. So you have to go east some and then come back to like the northwest. So it could be faster if you want to try and cut through uh, the forest, uh, like this forested area behind Goodmead. Um, probably shave off like an hour, maybe. I'm okay to take a road. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys being the travelers you are know that that's, like, infinitely more, infinitely safer than um, trying to cut through and, you know, never knowing what you're going to stumble upon. <clears throat> yeah, we should stumble upon. We should stumble some. <laughs> I'm sick of playing house. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Um. Double chums. Are two songs playing? Is that what you said? No, I said stumble chums. Oh. Um. 
yeah, let's, uh, we should be on our way then, I suppose. Is there anything we need to do in this town before we leave? Davos, do you have to do anything in this town before we leave? <clears throat> Is there, like, no, uh, no. I'll wait till we get to the big town. No speaker business. Okay. Um... Uh... Well, if, if that's it, then as you guys begin to, like, step out of uh, Goodmead, you can see it's, like, another... I, don't know, I feel like it's, like, perpetually bright there because of all, of like, the like the whiteness. Like, it's, it's easy to kind of lose yourself in the blanket of snow everywhere. A few people are scuttling from, um, from building to building. No one's really sitting or doing anything outside because of how cold it is. Um, as you start to get towards the edge of town, you hear this act, this ruckus, this like this yelling, um, and you hear one voice, two voice, three voice, and then you start to hear like there's like a dozen voices back and forth. Um, and as you come around the bend and get and like in between the houses, you can see like in the distance uh, a couple of uh, people uh, on foot start to take off like towards the forest area, and uh, there's villagers kind of are all around some of them are starting to come out of their house to see what the ruckus is and in the middle of it all is, is a group of, uh, of of four dwarves uh, that you recognize from the night before and they're kind of like picking each other up off the ground and one's got a bit of a a, a bruised and bloody nose and uh, Shandar himself too is kind of like walking around and and checking on one of the other uh, villagers who is uh you know, was like lying almost face down in the dirt and checking to see are they okay. <clears throat> They're pulling a stunt. What happened? I'll tell you what's happened. While you were snoozing in your in your mead house, uh, a couple of outsiders, much like yourselves, came in and started c causing trouble. Luckily, we were heading back out to uh, back out to our, our our shift when we came across them and were able to 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 deal with them. Scare them out of town. Yeah. Sick, I bet. Looks to me like you guys just got a little drunk. Couldn't handle yourselves and fell all over the place trying to get home. One of the one of the villagers comes, No, I no, they they tried to rob me. Uh if Shander hadn't stepped in, I I don't know what would have happened. There was about there was six, seven of them. It seemed like they were uh they were gonna cause a lot of damage in the town. Seems mighty convenient. Yeah. What heroes? Yeah. That sounds oh. sus. Yeah. We, well, 12. There were 12 guys. We, you know, we fought those 12 guys. You know, they were, they were tough customers. What are you talking about? Yeah, we just, we just beat them up. There was only like no, seven these were different or eight. Ones. No. No, these were different ones. Yeah, we just, you know, we just beat them up real quick, so. There are others you see? were playing? Yeah, what see, I, I'm just demonstrating that we can make up fictional stories as well. The villagers kind of say, make it up, though. There were actual people here with knives and swords. They just took off into the woods. They'll probably be back if I had to guess. Or should us adventurous types go into the woods? Wink, wink. I agree. Don't rightly care what you guys do. We're going to get these people back to their houses and uh, maybe uh, try to talk to some of the the local uh, guard around here and make sure that uh, they keep an eye out. You know, because that's what we do in these towns. We look after our own. You rely on others. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a, it is a village, so there are other people that we have to account for, yes. Well, good luck. Hopefully you don't have to play hero again. It looks like you guys barely got a lot out alive this time. We'll do like we've always done and, and take care of ourselves in the town the best we can. He kind of the, town, like, the, <clears throat> the town deserves better. I, probably. And he just kind of keeps walking back towards like the southern part of town. Can 
I don't know. I kind of want to roll insight check to see if he's genuinely concerned about the people or he just feels concerned about um, being discovered. Um, do whatever you can. You can roll insight if you want to. <laughs> no, I'm not. I think the Quinn wouldn't give a shit. <laughs> Caro's kind of looking around confused like wait what what's going on what we're chasing um, we're chasing these idiots into the woods or are we are we heading on our way well, I want to ask how many how many townspeople were like vouching for this happening there's about four or five around okay they I want to talk to like... one of them sure so what what happened we were just minding our own business starting our morning and you this group of people kind of came into town and they were asking questions about, you know, where uh, where the speaker is, where the, where the speaker lives, and we were trying to not really give them much attention. And then they just brandished these weapons and started telling us to give a, to give us everything they have. We have nothing anyway. What what, what did, could we possibly have given them? Yeah, no, it must have been scary. What did they look like? I just they had their bandanas that all covering their faces, but they looked I don't know kind of points to you and he's like well they kind of look you know of your build at least your size and he looks at like Odaxi and he looks at uh Dequin and goes well they definitely don't look like either of you they weren't armored or anything they just seem to have like typical leathers on outdoor outdoor cold gear and they were they just each I think each had a crossbow uh, a sword perhaps mm-hmm. nothing distinguishing about them uh, no, I don't. It happened very quickly. I don't think so. <clears throat> okay. Can I ask the other one, the, an, another villager, a similar question? Sure. No matter who you ask, they all give you a very similar okay. uh, retelling of the of what they saw from different angles. But um, yeah, the, the story lines up with each one. Okay. Where'd they run? Where'd they go? They went to the north towards the the wood the wooded area. Perhaps we can leave Melendra to look after and do first aid. And... Uh, I've had, had quite enough of this town. I think. Uh, I mean, are, are you not going to bring Shander without me? Oh, I think we're going north. You're gonna go. Catch these forest i don't know. try try and track these guys down possibly i don't know mr speaker is that what we're doing <laughs> they they couldn't have gotten far right this is they're just pulling their buddies off the ground here yeah i mean you guys caught the tail end of the skirmish and you know they're all on foot if the if, if this really happened and the town people are worried that they're going to come back i feel like we should I mean, it's on you know, the way. People you're talking to are visibly, like, you know, shaken up about what happened. We must protect this town. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of... Level 20, oh, never leave good mead. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do some I mean, it's... Math, math equations anyway. It's on the way, right? If, if they went to the woods in the north, we could investigate this. Yeah, it depends on mm -hmm. you know, it's, if it's on the way, if you're going to continue to push through, you know, or whatever. Like, that's it. It absolutely is. Like I said, it's it's just through it's just off the beaten path a little bit. You know, the woods are they're not terribly expansive, but, you know, they're they're pretty they're pretty thick. Yeah, my point is just that if, if this was a, a publicity stunt, then we're still at least headed towards Bryn Shander. Do you want to tell the people that you vanquished their uh, foes? Yeah. Let's tell them that we, we're not going to wait for them to come back. We're going to go and keep the town safe. Mm hmm. Who are you telling oh, that's to? That's my vote. I mean, that's my vote. I'm waiting to hear what, what Daxi and Caro think. What? I. No, I think we should do the same. All right, then I'll. I guess if the if we're still around, all the, like the townspeople who are concerned, well, that's who I would announce that to. 
oh, okay. Uh, well, I, you see, like, they're all kind of, like, kind of confused and still processing what's going on. And even Olivessa kind of, like, come, comes by and she's, like, after she hears what's going on, she's, like, kind of consulting with each of them. She goes, all right, well, I mean, we'll, we'll keep an eye on, you know, on everyone here in the meantime, I suppose. And if we don't see you again, then that, I guess, it means you've been successful on some, some points hopefully or not successful and then it doesn't matter anyway i guess um you know just try to come back within you know a week or two's time so that we can actually do this damn election so we're, we'll be sure to return uh oh, okay uh well best of luck then um and she it's like kind of like gets the rest of the townspeople like inside and like you know back to somewhere where they can kind of warm up. Um, so the the plan is to to push north into the uh, into the woods to try and track these these people down. Yeah. How uh, how do you guys want to accomplish that? So you can kind of push in. Are uh, you guys immediately like behind uh, the meat hall? You guys see what are like structured. Um, not structured, but like protected uh, hives everywhere because, you know, there are bees kind of constantly buzzing around this town as much as possible um, when it's not, you know, too cold for them to even be conscious. Um, the hives serve as like kind of a source of, of, of the honey that, you know, makes this this mead here special and tastes better and than everything else served in the tin towns. So once you guys get behind it, once you guys get past that... Um, it's uh it's 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 a forest wooded area is there a certain uh is there anything you guys want to do to try and uh yeah, how do you guys tracks. want to get these guys what's that are there tracks uh yeah there would be some tracks um i guess make you'd have to make like a survival check probably to discern um well, i guess you wouldn't really have to i mean you would just see these like massive tracks kind of going off in one direction from from where yeah so i mean they should be relatively easy to follow um once you get a little deeper into the woods, you do kind of see them like break up and go into different directions. <clears throat> um, and like how many foot, like different directions, three different yeah. directions, uh, single people, like how many people, how many footsteps are we following? For that roll or survival check. Okay. See if you can kind of discern the different, the different patterns for a number of people. Um, get about a half dozen or so, which kind of lines they, up with what the the townsfolk were telling you. And when they split up, it was two a piece. Or, uh, yeah, you just kind of see like you see individual sets of tracks just kind of go off in different directions. But then like it's just like almost chaotic. Like it doesn't seem to be organized in the different directions that they go. Is there any blood spatter? Like, did they get injured in the fight? Um, you don't see anything of note, no. Hmm. Well, what do you want to do, speaker? Do we split? Do we follow one? No, we should pick... <clears throat> um, we should pick one. I don't, I don't think we should split up. No, yeah, that's sticking together. Kind, sure. of, kind of, because yeah, that's probably the best idea. And Melandric Melang kind of nods from behind as well, as you guys are kind of, uh, they've got their, their two horses, uh, kind of bringing up the rear there, wading through the snow. Uh, so you press forward, uh, and you can kind of see as you follow, like you just gotta follow one side of the tracks, right? Yeah these uh these like taller taller pine trees uh mm -hmm. it's actually kind of nice to see color and see some variety of life you know out here like there's not very many heavily wooded areas um unless you're along the base of the mountains uh so it's it's cool it's it's, it's nice to like i think for like a, a a new landscape and you guys are kind of stepping over occasionally catching like a root that you can't see because the snow is like six inches high so you kind of stumble for a second uh 
pushing through the snow, you kind of get a sense that you see that all of the tracks that have been left, they actually seem to kind of be coming back together in some way. So the tracks that you didn't follow, you see them coming back in on each other and you can kind of pick up separate <clears throat> tracks in different areas of the woods. We must be getting close. <clears throat> I guess if they're all regrouping. Do we want to just kind of charge in or? I mean, what do we see? Just a charge into the woods some more? Or do we see anything where they could be hiding out? Uh, you, you, in front of you is just, just, if there's not a tree directly in front of you, there's a tree shortly behind that. And it's just like, kind of like, passing through like you don't you, you it's hard to see more than like 20 feet straight ahead so uh it's i mean the tracks all the tracks are all you really have to follow at this point um it's just tree after tree after tree unfortunately <clears throat> well if they split up that means that they're at least partly expecting someone following them so i'd want to be really quiet and I don't know. Move slowly. You like, As we continue like, to. Carol and Melandra kind of um, pop off the horses and they, you know, got grab the reins and they're gonna go like kind of on foot, I think, and pull the horses like to the trees. Um, I guess we could we could also probably just tie the horses up here for now if we think they're gonna if we're gonna try and to get the jump on these guys. <clears throat> Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can't really sneak on a horse. Then again, I can't really sneak. But Axie sneaks. I could also jump on the horse and ride straight ahead, screaming, banging my shield, and see if it stirs them out of the woods. Melandra kind of looks over at Caro, like, not 100% sure if she's serious or not. <laughs> like, if that's actually a plan she thinks is a good idea. <clears throat> I think expediency is probably best. You said probably expediency? Not. Yeah. You should just keep following it at pace. Like, uh, what Daxi says. We're not the stealthiest bunch. But we can be ruthless. <clears throat> if we want to try and um, chase them down, we could uh, perhaps like each take up a, like what, like the flank the uh, flank of the tracks and try and get in front of them and slow them down some. And just yep. on the horses. pounce on yeah, them. Yeah, do the horse people to take the sides, and the, th the three of us will kind of How take the, the middle. Horses? I mean, Davos, First you could you could probably ride on the horse with me if you want. And these two, these two towering, two big um, boys, muscle muscles, can they can just kind of come barreling down the, uh, barreling down the center. <clears throat> That's fine. Yeah, let's do that. Sounds like a plan. Okay, this is exciting. And you see, Carol gets back on the horse and kind of like, like perks up a little bit. She like hasn't you know been able to like unleash the horse full speed i think this entire uh this entire trip uh let's see okay i'm sorry i was just trying to think about how to do this so i will say uh so as you guys press forward and you you see the uh the tracks start to they're, they, they're coming back in on each other and they're coming back into like what looks like one kind of clustered pattern that's kind of the uh, the moment where like Caro and Melandra kind of like begin to break away and like pick up speed kind of to the right uh, and left of the uh, of the tracks and break around um, weaving in and out of trees are you gonna did you want to ride with Caro Davos are you gonna yeah I will so you gripping kind of for sheer life uh, on the back as she kind of like starts to uh, I don't know, move two three four times the speed that you guys probably could uh, on foot and um, 
and you do start to see in the distance and hear in the distance this like crackling of like uh, of footsteps and people breaking branches as they are still trying to like you know move with some sort of speed through and then you hear do you guys hear that I I try to motion to Kara to like get in front of them and cut them off she kind of nods and like continues like to press around the bend and come uh and even like even kind of further out and come around and you can actually see that you guys are coming up on a bit of a clearing not not a large one but it looks like enough that um that anyone or anything kind of coming through this area would you know they would have they'd be a little exposed at least um Can we cut them off before we get to the clearing? Uh, I'm. I think as she's like trying to like to, to to gallop with some sort of speed. I think we may have already cut them off. And as you guys look, uh, make a <clears throat> make a perception check. Davos. Every, oh, okay. Yeah, no, just Davos. Um, it's hard to tell. Uh, but the clearing looks largely undisturbed. Um, I mean, if we've cut them off, then I'd, I'd say. Should we, we'll wait here and see if yeah, we let's can try catch to them. set up, set up to the side and. Okay. Yeah, let's get them before they get to the clearing. I tell you what, I will show you the clearing. So let me do that. Mm -mm -mm. So it's not much. Ignore these footsteps. Just say they're your own footsteps. You know, I don't I don't draw these maps. Gotta use what I got sometimes. What? Uh so I'll <clears throat> Caro. Oh, I'm not charged, that's why. Arrow and Davos. In which direction did we come from? So you guys would have looped around. Um, so you guys would have come around the left over here. Let's see if I can. Oops. So you guys would have come like over from this direction. And then, and then, so you would actually be a little more northern than this. I can, I can move you. My mouse is giving me some issues here. So you guys have the woods to your back here. Um, <clears throat> and you guys came around the left side, and you would be expecting Melandra to have come around the, uh, like, is coming around the right side. We would expect them to come from like here-ish. Uh, no, they're gonna come from the, yeah, they're gonna come from the south, southeast. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna set up shop behind this shrub, rock okay. shrub. Looks like a shrub. As you get even closer, like to to the other side of the uh, the opening, you can hear um, the kind of like jostling of of people and some and some like indiscernible sounds of of uh people moving in your general direction uh you've probably got like i would say like you know in t technical terms probably like one round of prep you could do if there's anything you wanted to do now would be the time and actually i'll pull up caro and see if there's anything caro wants to do is melange there with him uh she will be she'll be like she'll be coming around in just a moment yeah so she'll be showing up soon um i will just i will here. uh cast mage armor <laughs> on myself okay um, and i think uh odaxi <clears throat> and quinn i'm assuming you guys at this point are like barreling you know after them right uh so you've probably got like you know like two rounds before you kind of catch up and then you'll you'll be 
more or less behind these guys. Um, just because I think the horses are going to be pretty quick. Uh, bam. Oh, give her the normal layer. There you go. I'm not going to throw the horses up there. I don't feel like dealing with them right now. So <laughs> you guys hopped off the horse and... Uh, <clears throat> And tie, and she just set it behind the tree back there, for narrative's sake. Sorry, sorry, Carol. If you were here, I'd let you manage it. Um, Carol's going to. I don't think she has a lot of spell slots. I haven't played much Paladin, so I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna burn all of her spells. Uh, she's just gonna kind of pull out her uh, her warhammer and. Uh, and uh, kind of take up a position near you, I think. Um, maybe even slightly in front of you. Uh, let's get some action movies, some action going on here. So as you guys kind of peel around and come around the uh, the left side of this tree uh, forest to get ahead of these guys, uh, you come set up shop. You find this like older looking rock kind of in front of you, and uh, and you're just waiting to 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 see something or some have something come through the clearing of the woods. Melandra kind of also does the same behind you guys and hops off, and she'll probably take a position like right or here around the rock uh, and pull out her her shield and her warhammer as well. Um, the breaking of twigs and leaves and the shouting and you even hear like what sounds like almost some chuckling um, as as a group of two, three, four figures start to step out of the step out of the woods now moving much slower than they were when you first saw them uh, you guys aren't you're not hiding by any means right <clears throat> Uh, is this, if this looks like a tree, is it a big rock? I don't know, I'd, I'd want to hide, kind of. It's pretty big, I mean, you could definitely, you could definitely get behind it, I just didn't know. I positioned Caro and, uh, um, Melandra is kind of like being out in the open, but if you want to, like, try to have some sort of surprise on these guys, I would, I would just move them behind is all. Yeah, I was wanting to be behind the rock. Okay. Do that. I'll do that. So you see these guys? Do you see me punch that punch that chick right in her face? Shut her right up. I should uh, I should honestly hit more women in my life. I'd probably feel a little better about myself. <laughs> Shit. Jeez. <laughs> um. <clears throat> I think begin to kind of start just start inching forward. The hell happened to? Brenton and his group. I don't fucking know. They just, you know, when we kind of split up there for a moment, I just assumed that they probably formed, uh, formed back up. Uh, frankly, I don't even know where the fuck we are in this place. You're I in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck are you? I am Davos, <laughs> and you should never have come to. Good mead. I'm gonna shoot this fucker. Yeah, we should punch him in the face. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's uh, get the initiative tracker going here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I think it should be up now. At least there we go. Uh, add a turn. Add a turn. I should have connected my mouse with this. Uh, and then I was just roll some random D20s real quick. Okay. We actually rolled pretty good. 18, 17. 
I sucked. And Caro and God, I hate roll twenty sometimes. Like when it like it doesn't like resize the uh, the like little rectangle when you click your token, so it just randomly like um, it's just too big for the screen and you can't click anything. Um, Carol rolls. Fifteen. What is going on? Why is it not saving my? <clears throat> uh, it looks like it, Davos, you're going to be up first anyway. So okay. I mean, with the surprise round, that actually probably checks out. So, um, what do you want to do first? Is this a surprise round? Um, no, because you did okay. the whole thing. You did like yeah, the yeah. whole speech. <laughs> which so. which color guy was the one who says he wants to hit more women? Uh, I, I, it would be hard to tell without hearing them talk <laughs> because you were behind the uh, behind the rock. Fair. Um, okay. But this guy right here, he looks real racy. Like he looks like he's a, he looks like a woman beater. Yeah. Um, I am going to cast, I am going to use my two sorcery points to cast darkness on this green guy's, uh, on the green guy's helmet. Okay. And so it creates magical darkness that can't be seen through. A 15 foot radius sphere from the object I cast it on. Okay. And only I can see through it. Unless somebody else has an, a way of seeing through magical darkness. Um, these guys, do they do not have that way at all. <laughs> they, are, uh, they are very. Um... Yeah, no, they're not. Let's see. What do I need here? Okay, I will just, uh, I'll, I'll mark it. Because I was going to try and draw, like, a magical sphere here, but I'm not going to be able to, unless you know how to quickly draw a 15-foot uh, sphere. Sure don't. Um, let's see, we'll do... Oh. Did you figure it out? Uh, yeah, kind of. Five, ten. Oh, it's not going to move with him, though, I'm assuming. No, it's not. So, <laughs> And it's not quite big enough. It's got to be another. It won't let me draw it past the map. So it's big enough to the northwest, but oh. not to the south or the okay. east. Well, it looks like it's going to encompass these guys, though, right? So, like, yeah. all of a sudden, there's just this big, is it a big black orb, essentially? Like, almost like in your, in like, well, you weren't, you didn't see the blackness as much. But, like, this just area is, like, now completely dark, right? Correct. And you hear kind of Karo Simulanja go, what the, where the fuck do they go? <clears throat> and then I will... Uh, then I'll do that, that's it, that's what I'm gonna do right now. You that's hear like a action. lot of, you hear a lot of swearing coming from, uh, coming from this, uh, this general dark area over here. Um, actually, did I roll, oh, I did, okay. Did I get Caro on there? No, let me roll for Caro real quick. Oh my god, I cannot stand this sometimes. Add a turn. Well, she rolled a 15. That's what she's got now. Um. Cool, so out of this darkness, yeah, I, you know, what? I don't even know what the hell these guys are gonna do. Like they don't, they don't know what the fuck magical darkness is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, uh, like I said, you hear a lot of swearing, and <laughs> the first guy, the first guy, kind of goes, uh, "What 
the fuck is this? And he's going to randomly move in a direction. No, he's going to turn around and try and run back the direction he came, I think. So he's going to... Uh, he's going to move one, two, three... Oh, no, it is that guy. Yeah, the, okay, so the first guy up in the order is the guy that you darkened. So he's mm -hmm. going to move one, two, three back and then realize he can't see anybody. Guys, I can't, I can't see shit in this place. He blinded me. He blinded me. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, I think he's just going to pull out his crossbow and take a shot in your direction that he thinks you're in um but he's got no fucking chance of hitting anything let me see At, um uh t does it does a six hit uh no all right uh well that's his turn his buddies are going to uh they're gonna also try and try and move i think oh man you really created a predicament here with your darkness they're going to i guess this guy will try to step forward some oh let me roll a d4 hold on so he's gonna go north never eat so i'm gonna go this way one two He's gonna bump into his buddy. Ah, oh, what the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? And there's gonna be like, Ted? <laughs> is that you? <laughs> I can't see. Uh, it'll take one more step. But he's still blind because this guy moved down too. I can't use your old circles anymore. Right from here, it's gonna be 5, 10, 15. <laughs> so he's still yeah. in this perpetual darkness. The next guy, we're just gonna do it this way roll a random direction. He's gonna move the same direction. And finally, I think, actually get clear of the darkness uh, and look around and figure out he's in the middle of fucking nowhere, um, back the direction he came. Uh, he's going to turn. I don't even think he can hit you from there. Um, let's see. Oh, no, it's got range. It does have range. Uh, 11 it does not <laughs> dear god it's like a circus down there now thanks to you <laughs> i need to really read your skill sheet and prepare probably for you just murking with all my encounters let's see the next guy let's give him a random direction since he can't see anything two he again runs he turns around and runs into the guy who has the spell on his <laughs> fucking forehead Amazing. um so he also continues to like not be able to see shit um, and that's their turn. Uh, who's up next? Kara's going to, uh, she's going to come around the, come around the rock and like, ah, oh, let me out. I'm where are they at? And she's going to see just darkness over here and see this guy. I think this is the only guy she can actually see. Goes, Davos, what did you do? <clears throat> uh, I made it dark. <laughs> she goes uh oh fuck it and she's gonna like just pull out a javelin and I think she's just gonna throw a javelin um, uh 13 uh, that will hit of course uh and for 4 damage to my main man down here Okay, uh, and Melandra will come around the other side, and from her angle, still see nothing, because I think from her direction, it's going to be darkness everywhere in this general facility here, uh, vicinity, so <laughs> she's going to kind of look back at you guys and just, uh, I guess she'll pull out her javelin and just kind of hold it at the ready, and wait to st wait to throw it if she sees someone uh, that seems like a reasonable thing to do uh okay that's the first round so it comes back to davos uh to quinn and 
uh, Odaxi, you guys are one we're more. Essentially, what's that? Oh no, we're not there yet. Okay, never no, mind. one more round away. So you'll be you'll be there soon. Um, <clears throat> it's back up to you, Davos. Okay, I am going to cast Chaos Bolt at this uh, red feller here. Which one? The red guy. Okay. Yeah, we'll uh, An 18 will hit. For seven nine. force damage. Nine yeah. total. I don't, uh, I'm yeah. sorry, was it this one or? The red guy, this this guy right here. Okay. They all, yeah, okay. I, I'm so zoomed back out to see some of this sometimes. Oh, sorry. So. Yeah. No, you're fine. Um, so nine from him. And so as that, as the. Do you like not know what it is until you cast it? Is that how Chaos Bolt works, right? Like, isn't it? Random? Yeah, yeah. It's like a whole bunch of stuff, and then based on some of the rolls, it'll tell me what I can pick between. So you release this bolt, and not I'm kind of sure of what's going to happen. And as it forms, and it and it as it collides with this guy's, it seems to have more impact than like than a normal like spell from you. And you can see him kind of real hits him right in the face, and kind of like almost breaks his nose. Uh, okay. Anything <clears> else? <throat> Uh, not yet. That's it. Uh, Actually, I'm gonna. Hang. On, 10, 15, 20. I'm getting into this darkness. Oh god. I'm in it. This is this darkness like the thing of nightmares? Yeah, it's sweet. <laughs> um. Okay. Sorry, I keep clicking everything. Let's go dragging you guys. That's driving me nuts. All right, let's see what our let's see what our blind folk do here. Uh, so up next is the guy who is blind. He is going to move west. Still, you know what? I guess I can give him an intelligence roll, but, but that's not that's a roll that's never worked out anyone for anyone here. Uh, any of my bad guys, at least. Nope, a three. He's going to continue to move west. And still unsure of why he's blind. One, two, three. Guys, I can't, I can't see shits around here. Where are they? Uh, and that's all he can do. I mean, he, he can't even fire. I wouldn't even let him fire at someone right now because he has no fucking clue where anyone's at. Uh, my next guy, he's now... He was blind, so he's still blind, so he'll, he's going to roll again. Three. He's going to move south some. Under this, this is, I'm just considering all this, like, this tree area here is just like, uh, like, they're actually under the tree growth. Um, and so he finally steps out, and he can actually see something again. Uh, but he now can't see Davos, but he can see Caro, so he's going to take a shot at her. I feel like he has like next to no chance of actually penetrating her AC. Oh no, 16. So I think that will actually connect. Uh, so he actually managed to get a get a shot right above her shield where she's uh, holding it, uh, and she takes six damage. Uh, and the next guy. got a one. Where's he at? Uh, he moves north. Oh, I can move your little circles. Look at that. That one. Uh, he's going to move north. One, two, and see Melandra and take a shot at her. Uh, oh, and he hits as well. Oh, he actually crits. Okay. Guy's coming out swinging now. They can actually see something. Uh, okay. And I think with that, it's all of their turns. Oh, no, there's one more. Which direction you go? He's going to 
he can't see anything. He's gonna go this way, this way. He can see the force behind him, but he can't see back the direction of, of everyone um, that he wants to actually shoot. So he's gonna kind of stay out here and he's just gonna ready a crossbow. Um, with Nat, we're at the top of the round. Uh, to your right, Davos, you hear some more rustling as uh, a couple more, oh Jesus, a couple more people come from the foot. Why do I keep painting <clears throat> things? They come from out of the woods, hearing like the kind of the, they already have their swords, their swords drawn, hearing all this scuffling kind of going on, and they look and see this, this this kind of void to the right, and then they see Caro and Melandra, um, and they get this like kind of like eerie smirk on their face. Um, that's probably right up until though a barreling um, <laughs> Odaxi. Uh oh, I put you in the wrong layer. Uh, Odaxi and the Quinn come from behind them. Um, essentially, what I'm assuming is probably sprinting the entire way up here. Yeah. Uh, and so they, they come out, they see this darkness to the right, they hear kind of the screaming, a couple of their guys are saying, over there, over there, and they're pointing in, in the direction they're looking. They see like one lone girl and a shield, and then like a slightly older woman in heavily armor and a shield. And they think that okay, what's well, it's, it's a lot of know, guys. Eight on, eight on three or four here, and then behind them is this massive, uh, a swole minotaur and a very educated but still also equally massive um, loxodon. <laughs> you guys want to go ahead and just add roll your uh, initiative. Uh, so let's make sure make sure you got actually put on the tracker here. Oh yeah. Doesn't seem have put me in. I see on there. I'll just. I'll oh yeah, yeah. There. there you go. Uh, okay. And so with that, we have a full party here. Uh, go ahead, uh, Adaxi. So you got the four guys. You see the four guys in front. They don't see, see me. Uh, no, they know you're there. They. Hear oh yeah. You. Okay. Yeah, they hear you come. Uh, and then. Over here, you, you can see the two, but then you see this darkness over here that you can't you can't see in or through this. What's the Davos uh, doing over there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know exactly probably, who's caused this mess. It's probably full of bees. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? Um. Yeah, grab something that's twenty, Odaxi. By the way. Uh, I know. What'd you say? The nat Man. 20 initiative. Uh, but it's negative one. I know, is, but oh. I still rolled a 20. I don't think that does anything, though, for initiative. No, it doesn't. Oh. Scraps special. anyways, all right? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought, wait, I, thought, I, thought, I, thought I, did, I thought I did something wrong, and you guys are yelling at me, and I was like, what do you, I don't know what to do. Um, I don't want to waste a spell already. I'm just going to whack one of these guys, but I don't so also don't... I don't know if I want to get right into melee combat right away. Don't forget that, uh, you know, you don't get your spell slots back right now in your current state. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just going to move up here and give this guy, mack him with the mace and start, okay. start messing in the middle, in the middle here. There you go. Yep. That'll do it. All right, four damage. Man, bad, bad damage roll. That's all right. No, you come right up behind and like <clears throat> without losing any steam, just bring that mace and clock this guy up behind the, uh, up behind the back of his head. Uh, uh, and else? as a bonus action, <clears throat> I'll cast Shield of Faith on myself since I'm getting in. Okay. B battle cleric here. <laughs> Sorry, it is a bonus I just wanted action, to hit. Right? Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Bonus action. Okay. So, make so sure that's you on myself. Your, yeah. Keep track of your AC there, and I think it's concentration, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And that means I can't cast anything else? Or you if can't I cast do another it... concentration spell. Right, um, okay. That's what I thought. And then if you take damage, you have to like have a constitution saving roll to maintain your concentration. Oh, God, I killed Got it. Um, okay, got it. All right. Oh, I made this guy concentrating. Uh, who's up next? Uh, Davos, you're back up to you. Unless you want to move again, Adaxi. Nope. Okay. All right, 5, 10, 15. This guy's right outside of the darkness circle, right? Yep. I mean, uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. He moved to get out, yeah. In inspired by what I heard my companion say, I'm going to cast Infestation oh, at this guy. <laughs> yeah, so you hear it in the distance, it's probably full of bees, and then... <laughs> So he's got, make a, he's got to make a con save. Uh, that guy right there, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. He rolls a 12. No shit. Yeah, so he, he gets stung by bees for three poison damage. So the swarm, and are these are these honey meat, uh, good meat honey bees, or are these like ravenous? Uh... No, these are, these are like murder hornets. These are... These are like ravenous, awful-looking bees. And so you hear you hear the guy. This is he, as the swarm kind of approaches him, and he goes, "What the fuck? What the? What was that?" And he just starts screaming. And the guy who's blind because he has a darkness on his helmet and he has no clue, he goes, "What is it? Where? What's going on?" He's like looking around, trying to see things. The guy in the red is like, "Holy shit!" He's like, "I'm not going anywhere near that. Uh, it's chaos over here in the darkness, darkness circle area," which I can actually. I think I can keep. Oh shit. So I thought I could keep yeah. moving it. The guy in the red should be in it. It's 15 feet from green. Uh, the guy in the red? Yeah, this guy. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, so he can't see. How did I move it earlier? I wish I could do that. There we go. I put a little... I can change my armor value on my token. So I did that. Okay, nice. Well, I did a plus two. Um... Okay, yeah. So he's blind anyway. So I don't, I don't, I don't know how to fucking move the thing. Maybe it's on the G yeah. player. Yeah, we'll find something else. I'll have to create like an, an actual like token or something we can control. You know, if you if it's something if you think you're gonna use a spell a lot, then we'll we can sort that out later. It's uh, um, depending on how the rest of this goes. It's probably gonna come up again. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, okay, next is the thugs. I think I'm just gonna run all the thugs at the same time. Um, so that it's just gonna be too much otherwise. But what I'll do is I'll average their best roll. I'll average all the rolls, which will put them at like a. Uh, I'm gonna say a ten. That's just for my sanity's sake. And then I'll go descending. Uh, so we'll just go from right to left real quick. Um, this guy sees Melandra. He's gonna take another shot with the heavy crossbow. Wait. So now they're all grouped at a ten. Yeah, uh, you know what? I'll do late. I, I tell they're you, not up. Okay, I'm confused. Okay. Yeah, because it's just tough to to run them all individually. But I guess no, I get I that. Do, I guess I could just actually run like at different levels and just split them up evenly across all of them. I don't know. They're well, no, they're at a ten now, so we'll just we'll sort it out. Uh, this That's guy's gonna fine. shoot at Melandra, and he's not gonna be able to penetrate the armor. This guy's blind, so now he needs to do his thing. <laughs> Figure out which direction. <laughs> he runs right in the demo. <laughs> Rush, which direction he's going to go? North, north, east, south. Um, he's going to run even further south. One, So he gets free here, I think, and can see. Yeah. Um, and he can see a Daxi, and he can see... Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm just going to flip a coin here to see which one he hits. Um, evens or Daxi. Odd is... Uh, is going to be the Quinn, so he's going to take a shot to Quinn. Ten to Quinn. <laughs> Pitiful. <laughs> My next guy. Uh, one, two, three. So he's not blind here. He's just being swarmed by fucking bees. Um, <laughs> that he doesn't know where they came from. Uh, Darkness bees. Darkness. Yeah, he doesn't know where they fucking came from. I guess he would have seen you kind of clock this guy, though, so we'll let him shoot you. 
a Daxi uh, for a 10 as well. I'm not rolling the same. No, but three 10s in a row. Jesus Christ. That misses. Uh, <laughs> great. Just FYI. Uh, <laughs> these guys, this guy's going to turn now and uh, take a swing at you, a Daxi. Uh, he does have hack tactics. So, um, because, that? He has a f- because he has I'll a friend. Pack- Pack yeah, tactics. Pack tactics. A thug has advantage on attack rolls against the creature if at least one of his allies is within five, five feet of you. Um, so uh, the first one's a 20, so that will hit, right? Yeah. And then six damage. Ouch. And you have to roll a con save. So roll a constitution saving throw. Uh, so you maintain your shield of faith. So that's good. Okay. Uh, and the next guy is going to also take a crack at you here. He's also going to have advantage. Uh, he rolls uh, 22, but he only deals four damage. What a jerk. <laughs> and then I have to con save again. Yeah, one more. Yep. So you're good. Nice. Uh, and the other two, I think they're going to charge forward. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Got one, two, three, four, five, six. Charge a Karo here. And they're going to make two attacks. Um, <clears throat> four. Uh, the first only one hit, so that's going to be seven damage to Caro. All right, who's up next? I'm going to delete you. I think DeQuinn, it's finally your turn, right? Ah, uh, sweet. Uh, who's ready for some long division? <laughs> <laughs> Bonus action, rage. Get within 10 feet of this fella, and uh, I'd like to... Recklessly attack him with the helper, please. Uh, please go for it. By all means. So nice about it. Fourteen hit. Um, fourteen does it, yeah, for sure. For thirteen. Oof. Thirteen damage. Mhm. So I'm catching up on. That's my seven. Yeah, you, uh, this, the guy in red, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not, he's not looking good. Uh, after the, after the, the, the axe front, or the mace hit to the back of the head and then followed up with a halberd in the side, uh, you can see he's, uh, starting to bleed very profusely. Um, anything else to Quinn? Nope, that's my turn. Um, uh, we are back at... What happened to Adaxi? Did I, did I delete you from the order I'm list? I'm here. Yeah, he, he's just at the bottom of the list. I oh, I, I double-clicked yeah. it in. Okay, so go ahead, yeah. Adaxi. It's back to me, you said? Yep. Yeah. yeah, back to you. I'm going to try to finish off this guy that... Here. Okay. With the mace attack. 19 does hit. 7 There's damage. He is on death's door. I wish I had a bonus action for any more attacks. Yeah, next character. Yeah, well, next character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he is, uh, he's barely conscious, barely able to stand. It looks like if you were to slap him oh. with your trunk, it would kill him. Can't, I can't bonus action that, right, though? That's no, an actual I, action. Unless it's in your yeah, features, yeah. Yeah. Now all I have is I can heal myself for a little bit, which I will since I took a bunch of damage. Okay. Uh, no, I, I'll save it next next round. I'm good. No no bonus action. Okay. Up next is Davos. I'm going to cast Chaos Bolt on this guy. Okay. Ooh. 16 uh, hit. Yeah, it does, for sure. Yeah, you get the sense oh, these guys are these guys are sponges. In terms of, um, they're not it's, very, not very dexterous. Uh, and it's psychic, psychic damage. damage. So you see this yeah, guy as he's already dealing with uh, the <laughs> swarm of uh, of 
bees around him. Now it's starting to, he's starting to like extremely freak out of it and have like a bit of an episode um, and uh, panicking. And he runs, as he's running around, he kind of runs smack into a tree. Uh, Davos, anything else? Um, nah. All right, Caro and Melandra. Caro's got two people around her here. She's gonna Warhammer time. Let's see. Oh yeah, maybe she will do that. She's gonna use her channel divinity, and she's going to um, abjure enemy as an action. Oh, it's only one creature. Oh, that's lame. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna swing. What kind of spells does she have? She's going to uh, bonus action cast Hunter's Mark on uh, the guy in front of her. And then, it's weird, I don't know why I did that. Uh, and then she's gonna take a swing at this guy right in front of her. So I'm gonna go back to here, the Warhammer, normal roll. Um, geez, is she crit on that? She did, right? Yeah. She swung one-handed. Jesus, look at all this. Do you guys see all this crap that she just posted? That's, yeah, that's so frustrating. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. So it's 10, but the critical is 8, so it's 18. <laughs> what the hell? And the hunter's mark is double 2. The hunter's mark was... What is all this? She can smite on that as well. Oh, she's going to smite on it then, for sure. We're going <laughs> to fucking cream this guy. Um, wait, is it smite a bonus action, though? Nah, it's just when you hit. You can just declare it, I think. Oh, gee, we're, we're declaring it then. Divine Smite. When you hit the melee, you can spend one cell slot and deal 2d8 radiant damage. I'm going to smoke this guy. Um, 48. 2D8. Yo. That's 10 doubled 20. I mean, this guy's dead. I mean, he's just gonna. she's going to crisp this guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like that time I vaporized the bear? Yeah. It's going to be like <laughs> that. It's it almost it's almost exactly like that. This will be she's a fine. Gonna, this will be a fine mist uh, with a flash of light. She's got as, as these two guys kind of like come and run directly at her. I don't know. Uh, she's going to like one of the like hardiest swings she's ever taken. She's going to come down on this guy in the yellow, and as she does, you can kind of see like the, her her war hammer start to glow. This sort of uh, this sort of. Uh, bright whitish uh yellowish light and it's just gonna careen down and very similar to how uh how uh De Quinn does division she's gonna just kind of bring it and it's like <gasps> smear like kind of just uh, smashes through the opponent here and the, there's like a plume of like smoke and or steam and from the from the heat of the hammer and the snow and then up the, there's just a bloody mess left there as she's just gonna just eviscerate this guy right here with this hammer, and he's fucking dead. I'm not even doing all the math because I think she literally got <laughs> like I don't know, 40, 50 hits in that one fucking swing. Um, Melandra's gonna run up uh, and seeing seeing this blow, like this sense of pride on her face. She's gonna also follow up with uh, with the warhammer attack here. Oh, but she's actually gonna fucking miss. So she's unable, like, still, like, kind of, like, impressed that her her protege kind of had such an incredible swing. She loses sight of uh, who she's attacking there, <laughs> and doesn't doesn't actually able to land the blow. Um, DeQuinn, you're up. Uh, yep. Okay. You just see, like, Even in though... the corner of the corner of your eye, you just see this like bright white light flash, and where there was once a guy by Caro, that person's no longer on this plane of existence. Yeah, she's got that covered. I'm going to attack the one in the blue and leave the one in the red for Daxi. Recklessly, please. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 21 does it. Nine. Nine. A nice strike. You uh, you just 
I mean, you're, it's almost like these guys aren't even wearing armor. You just kind of clean right through, and you can feel the halberd like make purchase in like his shoulder. Uh, all right, it is all of their turns. Um, we'll just start from right to left again. So this guy's not blinded, but now can't see. I guess he's gonna go one, two. Not blinded, but he can't see. Well, he can't see anything because oh, like. Because the in front of him, this blackness is kind of clogging the entire right. battlefield. Yeah. So he's oh, he can't up. see through it. Okay. Right, right, right. So he's going to move forward, and he's going to take uh, another bow shot at... Uh, with a nine, not going to do anything. Uh, our guy who's who has the helmet of blinding on him that he doesn't even know. <laughs> um, he's gonna, let's just do see what he's going to do. One, two. He's going to run... Panic this way. One, two, three. <laughs> His thing moves with him, but you know, now he's blinded this guy again. But now this guy can see some. It's it's, it's just chaos over there. Uh, this guy's dealing with bees. It's a really good crowd crowd control. This guy's dealing with bees and uh, the mental instability of having bees tear him apart. Uh, he can now see De Quinn since the, the blindness kind of revealed, revealed it to him so that he'll probably just shoot there. Yeah, he has an advantage. Uh, 14. Ah, the misses. That, well, he's, he goes to shoot, but he, he can barely see because his eyes are kind of full and shut. He's probably slightly allergic kind to bees. Full of bees. <laughs> yeah. Um, this guy here is going to return the favor and attack you. Uh, with his mace. 18. Uh, he's going to attack Quinn. Oh, can he reach? He's got 10 foot. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, he'll move up one. Gives the Daxia uh, attack of an inch. Yeah. Yeah, because I think we're going to... Where are you kind of placed? You're kind of in the middle of a spot here at Daxia. I'm going to say you're right there and you would get an attack. I was here. Oh, yeah, well, let's say I was here then. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Between both of them. Yeah, because he, he swung at you once, I think, so he would have had to be within five feet of you. Right. Uh, so you get so does that mean I swing at him? Yep, 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 you can. So I just roll the damage? I, I ought well, to, to hit attack. or no? You have to, you have to roll oh, attack okay. and hit him, yeah. Okay. 15 hits. Six damage. As he turns to leave, you <laughs> lay Crack one on, him on the, the head. back of the dome. <laughs> um, and yeah, 18 does hit. Uh, six bludgeoning. Which is the three. And this guy's going to take a swing at you, uh, Adaxi. He's got... Oh, he doesn't have advantage anymore because the guy moved away. So normal roll. 12. No. Nope. Son of a bitch. This guy up here saw his good friend Lloyd get just absolutely smothered uh, by a warhammer. Lloyd. <laughs> but uh, he's going to attack uh, Melandra because that's who attacked him. So, normal. Oh, 18. Landra takes another hit. Okay. Landra's looking like she's all right. She's like probably half speed right now. She's taking a couple blows, but she's okay. Uh, I think we're back at the top. I think it's back to a Daxi. You've got a guy on death's door in front of you. Uh, yep. Two, two, two guys to the right. It's gonna hit the guy in front of me again. Take him out. Okay. Yep, that'll do it. You don't even really need neural damage. Okay, you wanted to? He did. Would you like to kill him in any special manner, or should I just kind of. Uh... Nope, after I deflect his blow from me with my shield, I just swing the other hand around and Fall clock him. In. The natural flow just yeah. kind of brings it down, and he, it didn't take much. Yeah, he's out immediately. Do you want to move? <clears throat> um, if I, I'll just kind of sync up with the oh. Quinn over here. Oops. Kind of be ready. Okay. Uh, up next is Davos. Uh, I'm going to. Chaos Bolt, this fella. This poor guy. How long does darkness last? 
Is it like a 10 minute? minutes? Oh God. You should just let him run the forest for 10 <laughs> minutes. Like, and just never kill him. <laughs> Cause he has a chance to, he could, he could randomly run back into it. Right. He's on him. This guy, he's wearing it as a helmet because he cast oh. a helmet. <laughs> Wait, does it move around with him then? Yeah. It's yeah. moving the entire oh. time. I just can't actually move the I, ring. You can't actually move the ring. Okay. There's a way to, I don't, I don't know. You probably just redraw it every time, but yeah, let's do whatever. How's the nine feel? Uh, the nine will miss on him. Yeah, actually, right. it's not. It's, that's just um, actually. I'm gonna wait, move wait, right wait, here. Look at this. I've moved the ring. Oh, it's still nice. too small though, isn't it? That's okay. It's a better picture. I'm gonna move close to him. Okay. And whisper sweet nothings in the because <laughs> he can't see anything. Mm-hmm. Just a question: Would Devos have advantage because uh, he can't see him in the darkness? Um... I don't know. I think it's melee. I don't know, isn't it? I'd have to look. I'll have to look. I'll look while you guys uh, continue, and we can we can always retcon it in a second if we need to. Okay. Uh, who's up next? Carol, I think up. Okay, well, she's gonna take the lead. So you're not gonna look. <laughs> well, give me a second. You know, I, yeah, I gotta swing Caro now. You gotta kill him. She's gonna, gonna, oh, I'm not worried about it. She's gonna Warhammer here. Um, you? Yeah. You? Yeah. So she does uh, eight damage. Uh, but she's got Hunter's Mark. She can move Hunter. Fuck. I should never. I should never play people who aren't here because I have no fun. You can move. as a bonus. You move action. it at the bonus, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so I'll roll Hunter's Mark, just a d6, right? Yep. Oh, okay, not bad. So 12 damage. Nice. Let me guess who's next, Melandra. So, yep. another, sw another swing. Oh, I was like, wait, that's not right. Uh, she's actually gonna connect. And she's gonna do. Uh... Oh, she's only gonna do four damage. Soft hit from Melandra. Uh, I think the Quinn's up next. Ah, uh, yeah. I would like to chop this guy's head off, please. <laughs> okay. Recklessly. Yeah. Not twenty. Oh. Not oh. twenties. <laughs> Two dat twenties. <laughs> uh, I duck <laughs> as he swings his halberd around. Yeah, I say if you roll two nat twenties, uh, this guy's dead no matter how much health he has. So uh, you know, you you do this how you want to do it. After he hits me, I throw a bit of snow on his face, and he doesn't feel his head on his shoulders no more. <laughs> he kind of like yeah, so you just you kick a little snow up in his face and. He kind of laughs, just at like kind of how childish the move is, and then like his like smiling head just kind of falls off the top of his body. Um, wow, great, oh, great roll. He did. I'm I can't even look up the hiding because you guys are just smothering these guys so quickly. <laughs> uh, we'll just keep for the sake keep moving things on because I know we got a 8:30 time. So let's. Uh, I'll look it up later, Davos. No problem. Not worried about um, it. <clears throat> uh, is it? Um, I think call it heavy train. What's, what's that? Is it half movement? Uh, no, we're not doing heavy train around here. Okay, I'm just gonna run out to this guy. Okay. Um, this guy's gonna take a shot at Melandro. That's just what he's been doing all day. You know, that hasn't been that effective. Oh, that one's pretty good actually. Yeah, Melandro takes a. Uh... Takes, takes a pretty good shot there. Melanda's looking a little hurt. Uh, this guy's blind, I, you know. So, <laughs> did you did you announce when you rolled up on him at all? Did I what? Did you announce when you were coming up on this guy or anything? You just got close to him, right? I just got close. My idea is that I want an attack of opportunity. Okay, yeah. He's actually going to move north three spaces. Taking this with him. <laughs> now blinding the guy that shot Melandra. Uh, you do get an <clears> attack of opportunity as he walks by. Normal? Uh, you can have advantage for that. I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. Yeah, I would think so. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
give him some stab and it's like, oh fuck! What the hell? <laughs> uh, I, yeah. So okay, and then this guy. Now he's blinded yeah. that other guy. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> but, so now this guy can see the Quinn. He's gonna come up and make an attack. Uh, but so it's gonna be both these guys are gonna make an attack actually, and they already have advantage because it's. Um, because of that attack. Actually, because you're reckless, right? Um, it's gonna be five damage and eight damage, so thirteen total, and then you have to whatever round down, right? Seven, six. What? Uh, six damage to Quinn. Six damage reduced to yeah, three. Yeah, that's. I had already no, I had already halved it for you. Okay. Uh, and this guy's going to take another swing at Melandra. Oh, it's not advantage, though. No, he critted on that, too? All right, Melandra goes down. She's unconscious. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Yeah, he critted on that, so it was... Uh... <clears throat> Uh, I think we're back to the order though. Adaxi, you're up first. You see the you see uh, an arrow and a, and, a, and this guy here turn and like they collapse on um, Landra pretty quickly and she's trying to protect Caro's like flank and she goes down, kind of leans back against the uh, the rock there. And he's pretty healthy. Uh, he's looking like he he's got some wounds on him. He's not one hitable right by any means, but he's he's damaged for sure. Well, your your definition of one hittable is different than my definition. Well, of that's true. You got <laughs> you, we have a wide spectrum of one shots around here. So, uh, if I think, well, she's already unconscious, huh? Yeah. Can't like unconscious. get her up with anything. Uh, any spell, any healing spell will, will bring her back to consciousness, and she'll be prone. I'll just get up on this guy then and hit him instead of okay. casting. Try to get his attention. Yep, that'll hit. Oh, very nice hit too. It's max damage too. <laughs> yeah, he's looking. He's looking a little less dirty now. Uh, up next is Davos. <clears throat> Attack the darkness hat guy. Be, I'm gonna be like here, so yeah, I can that's reach. Fine. That's what oh, I am talking funny. about. <laughs> yeah, and I up chart up uh, cast it. So let's see. Seven. Is it Lord? 30... None of these numbers like add up. Is it it's 34? thirty-four. Thirty-four. Yep, thirty-four is, is that lightning. Right? Oh yeah, because it's double double dice there, double dice there, and then all together thirty-four. Um, how do you want to char this guy? Uh, what's this helmet made out of? Is it metal? It w yeah, we'll <laughs> say it is. For the, yeah, it is now, for sure. Yeah, I want his metal helmet to get struck by uh, just this chaotic amount of lightning. Um, and I, and I, yeah, I just wanted to like rip through his body and him fall down. And I... Uh, Want to go to him and pick up the darkness helmet? Uh, I think it's. Yeah, you can use a free action. That's fine to pick up the helmet. Um, as you like, yeah, as you shoot the lightning at his helmet as a superconductor, it it kind of just like just travels down his body and looking for the quickest way down to, like to the earth. Uh, and you can see like a little smoke from his eyeballs and his mouth as he just kind of flops over, having no conception of what's happened to him the past five minutes you know that he's been running around here he has no fucking clue um okay uh, anything else i think that's pretty much it for you right if i have more movement i would want to go up here but yeah yeah that's fine um do you see that guy what, what's that smell <laughs> um caro is going to take a step here and she's going to use Lay on Hands, I think. Uh, as an action, you can touch. Uh, 
Nah, eh, she's not gonna do this. She's not gonna waste an action on that. She is gonna fucking she's gonna hammer on this guy. Uh, 22 for nine damage, but she's also going to. Uh, I'll save her last spell. Nine's a pretty fucking good hit, so. Uh, oh, that's a Daxi. Nope, that's him. Never mind. Oh wait, all he has is nine health left, so she she just destroys this guy too. Uh, this guy, uh, perfectly placed shot, and she uh, comes up underneath from the ground up underneath and like just cleans him under the chin, and uh, and he is out as well. Um, and she's gonna make a death save. one failure I'll do it this way I'll do it the opposite I'll say one. okay and then I think it's uh, who's alive who's left alive here got a guy down here and a guy so, in darkness oh. <laughs> um, Davos this guy's gonna do his thing where he's gonna try and randomly go in a direction because he's blinded uh, north hey, one, so he could act attack of opportunity. He could come here. He can actually see. And uh, take a shot. Actually, he can't see a Dax. So you can see Caro. She's probably got cover. Uh, I don't see him making this shot, but here we go. Nah, he wasn't even remotely close. Uh, 11 uh, for 5 piercing damage. That actually does connect. You. Yeah. Why can't I get this guy's help? Uh, who's up next? Um, both the guys are going to attack you recklessly down here. Or attack you. It's advantage because, well, they have hack tactics anyway, so it doesn't matter. Roll. Roll. Um, it's going to be eight. It's uh, 11 damage total to you, uh, DeQuinn. But that's not halved. So not half? No. Nope. Yeah. Sorry, I know I keep changing it up on you, how I deliver that information <laughs> to you. So uh, I think that's it. I think we're back up to the top of the order, which is... Um, Daxi. Oh, Daxi. Uh, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on Alandra so she can get back up okay it's a good it's a good cure too she kind of like, like her eyes kind of like flutter open and she looks over and sees Sorry. you uh, and she kind of realizes like what happened and she goes oh thank you friend I appreciate it she's uh she's not down she is prone uh up next is davos wait i can move after that right yeah you can yeah and you can use a bonus action if you have anything no i don't just uh how do i how do i do the thing where like you see how far you can move on the left you know, the line or whatever underneath the uh, magnifying glass oh there we go so i can move 30 right yeah <clears throat> yeah all right so i can make it over there if you click your icon and press the right click instead of left click, it measures out your movement. That's there. what I was trying to do. Wait, so click. So click your icon, go back to. Oh, I see. And then oh. just right click. Right click just moves the map for me. Uh, have you got your icon selected? You have to go yep. back to the select move. Yeah, I, d I did. You're drawing arrows. And then it unselects when I. I don't know. I'll just move them. It's fine. I know where I'm going. Although. All right. Yeah. Davos? Yeah. Let's go. <clears throat> I'm going to head <clears throat> to here. I think I'm going to help with you, right? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I could put these guys in the darkness. <clears throat> and then I'm going to 
cast on the red guy uh, infestation. Okay. It's a con save for him. Thirteen. That uh, matches it. So as you kind of shoot these, I'm assuming bees again, oh, uh, yeah. heat the dark. What's that? Yes. The darkness kind of uh, panics him a little bit, and he like ducks. And the bees also blinded by the darkness. They just kind of shoot in a direction, not really sure of which way to go. So it's a miss. All right, and then I'm gonna back up one so that this guy's this bottom blue guy's not in the darkness anymore. Okay. Uh, Caro is going to, um, she'll, what will she do? She'll bonus action move Hunter's Mark, and just head this way, I guess. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35, 40, she'll just go here and dash. And that'll be her turn. Ranger will do the same, but the other direction. 5, 10, 15. Oh, she has to spend half her movement to get up. She can go 5, 10, 15. Yeah, she can get there at least. She's going to stay on the edge of the darkness. Uh, and then to Quinn. I mean, you see the Ranger ah. kind of come up beside you here. Oh. Okay. Is... I can't see this guy in front of me, the red one. Correct. Uh, correct. Uh, well, I mean, right. Yeah, I guess you couldn't. You you may see. I mean, you may see like pieces of him here and there, like as it comes in and out of the circle since at the edge, but it's hard to make out him as a whole. That's okay. I'm going to just move somewhere in front of. This guy, and I'm going to attack with the Hellbird recklessly, please. Okay. Uh, Eleven hits. Wow. Yeah. Uh, total of eight damage. Okay. He's looking really good. I'm going to use my hammering horns. Okay. To make a strength save DC 13, or be pushed back ten feet into the darkness. <laughs> A 19. Well, he stays. He uh, kind of ducks as you as you almost slice open his chest, and he just barely misses him with the hammering horn, so he doesn't have to go anywhere. All right. Uh, first guy. Well, Carol got there, so he's probably going to take a swing at her. Uh, on 11, is definitely not going to hit. Um, so he's going to kind of... Uh, he can't really run anywhere. That guy's blinded. Let's see what he does. He's gonna go north. I'm gonna go. Oops. One, two, three. I'm gonna say. Say since you can't really see him, you don't really get an attack of opportunity since he he stays blinded. Like he doesn't know where the fuck he's at half the time. So. Um, so that's going to be his turn, I suppose. But this guy can see, so he's going to attack. Uh, attack to Quinn. Gets advantage. Uh, 18 for 3 damage. That's not halved. So 2? Uh, 1, isn't it? Half, that's 1.5, round down. Uh yeah. Ooh, you have one health one left. Yeah, apparently. Uh, Daxi, you're up. <laughs> you gonna move up and attack? You might be muted if you're talking. Yeah, I'm attacking and then moving up and attacking. Okay, doing things. <laughs> 14 hits. Doing them. Shake Five damage. Uh, all right, uh, Davos. Uh, <clears throat> let's go. This guy. Let's firebolt him. 
four fire damage. That will do. Yeah, that'll hit for sure. So let's do that. Minus four. All right. Anything else? Um, I'll just move up here to kind of make this guy more easily hittable. Okay. Let's move your little circle, little circus ring you've got going on here. All right. Uh, Caro, she's going to she's going to swipe at this guy. Fifteen uh, with eleven one-handed damage. Um, fuck it, she'll smite this guy too. Let's get this. Let's get this show moving here. Thundercats. <laughs> she'll use your last spell slot here and bring down the thunder. She can. She can smite more than once, right? I didn't even look. I think it's equal to. Yeah, I, I just don't know what the modifier is. Um. Yeah, it seems like it's fine. Um, 2d8. So 8 plus uh, 11 is 19. This guy's looking rough. Looking real rough. Um, Melandra is going to attack. Well, she might just do the same thing. Oh, she's not going to have to. This guy's hurt. Uh, oh, my 20. Eighteen. Yeah, she's gonna cream this guy here. He's donezo. He had only four health hit points left. Uh, donezo. DeQuinn, you're up. Uh, I got the... Can't... Right. You don't even know what's going on over there because nah. you can't see through the darkness. Time to recklessly attack the darkness. I don't even know if anyone's in there. <laughs> I know. I don't want to go in there. <laughs> I mean, you could I'll... just like ready an action at the edge, and if you see something, you see something. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll just ready my halberd to recklessly attack anyone who comes out of the edge within 10 feet. All right. Would he be allowed to just swing wildly? Um, <laughs> Even though I can if see like, it, like if like he was like invisible, like turned invisible in the square, and he wanted to like, attack a square and maybe get lucky, but like since he doesn't even <laughs> see anything, you know, I was kidding. Um, that being said, it's this guy's turn. Well, actually, this guy up here. I mean, I think he's gonna run. I don't know. It's probably not gonna survive, but we'll, we'll take we'll take off. So you get an attack of opportunity to Daxi. Because you got in melee with him, right? Yeah. Okay. So does Caro. And actually, that I, guy should probably... But I, whiffed, be, but I whiffed him? That guy should probably be dead anyway, because I don't think I forgot, to, I forgot to add her Hunter's Mark on there. Uh, she did not. Um, she's going to... She's gonna, render him unconscious as he tries to run. She's going to clock him in the back of the head. It's going to be enough to kill him for sure. All right. Oh. And this guy's blinded. Darkness, man. He's going to move. continue to move north. One, two, three. And he's going to stop because he has he can't see shit. Uh, Odaxi, you're up. No real clue what's going on to the south of you there. Uh, and I can't really go in into there, right? You could go into there, um, but you're like you'd, I, you know, where but would you Then I wouldn't How be able to see to either. No, right. you wouldn't be able to see, right? I don't think I can do anything then. You could do the kind of the same as the Quinn, and maybe like prepare an action in case something comes at you. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll cover like this side. Prepare an action. What's so you just hold? That? So you can hold an action. And then uh, with a trigger, and then if the trigger happens, you could you can do your action. So you could like repair guiding bolts, and the first person you see that comes out of the circle that's an okay. enemy, you could like attack him with the guiding bolt. You know, I'll I mean? just prepare an attack. Okay. Uh, Davos. Remind me, uh, is this guy not looking so hot? Uh, he's substandard. He's okay. He, he hasn't got a lot of damage. 
<clears throat> He's the last one, right? All right, I'm yeah. going to I'm going to dismiss the darkness. Okay. So, uh, boom! Everyone sees this guy now. Tell him uh, I, I said you were in trouble, and then I'm going to cast another darkness. <laughs> darkness, <I> cast <laughs> darkness again. Oh no! <laughs> Chaos bolts. Oh, do you yeah. Want to that one too? That one's nice. So it's uh, 15 uh, lightning, I think it said. Yeah. Poison. I just, to spell the darkness, and then and then uh, it's actually uh, you'd be a disadvantage because you were in melee range with him. So I'm just gonna assume you didn't be in melee range when you shot him. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you bring down the darkness and then just electrify this guy from behind, and he is now like he's hurting pretty badly. Um, and he just kind of, now that he can see, he just sees like dead corpses of, of all of his friends around him. Uh, Caro is up. She's gonna kind of like take a step forward and then like get like pretty close to him, and uh, she's gonna like like kind of ready her mace. She's gonna say, "Friend, I, I don't think you're gonna want to try and run. It didn't happen. It didn't go too well for your friend up uh, to the north." And she's just gonna kind of wait a second and look at the rest of you guys. And Melanchia's gonna kind of do the same. To Quinn, it's up to you. Up to me! It's up to you, what do you want to do? Does Davos give me the nod? Yeah. Davos, do you give him the nod? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to divide him vertically, please. Okay. <laughs> Uh, your, your math looks good. Alright, how do you want to do it? Same way. I think I said vertically, so I'm going to get from the hip and slice him across horizontally. Oh, God. <laughs> Alright. Uh, you, 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 you sever him in the, in the, in the meaty, chunky pieces. Um, and that will take us out of combat and that will also conclude our session i'm glad we were able to wrap that up really quickly um once you guys kind of got ahead of them in the numbers game it was only a matter of time mm -hmm. oh yeah um, so we will pick up back from this bloody scene um you know uh god <laughs> in two weeks we'll try but we'll have to see how that lines up with like you know with everyone else we should be good there right um uh, so it'll be, it'll be the third yeah. Uh, so you know, we we'll, we'll sort it out as a group and see and make sure everyone can make it. But um, uh, awesome guys, thank you. Sorry that I started running a little over there, but you know I wanted to kind of get through that combat really quickly. All good. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for popping in. Um, thank anyone that swung by for uh, to watch the show, and uh, hopefully everyone has a a great holiday break. Um, and uh, you know whatever you guys celebrate. Um, yeah. All right. I will kill the stream here. Thanks again, everyone. Yeah, I know. Man, man I'm a man of few. I'm a man of words. That's what they tell me. Uh, have a uh, have a great night, everyone. Right, take care, yeah. guys. Later. See you. Thanks. For